All right, I see we're at the top of the hour. We have our membership here. So I'll call the meeting to order. Welcome everyone, good evening <clears throat> to the Wakefield Board of Appeals meeting for January 13th, 2021. We'll start uh, by calling the meeting to order and taking uh, attendance by roll call. So Chip Tarbell. Here. Ken McBain. Here. Amy Wall. Here. Joe Pride. Here. I'm Lucy. Right here. Greg McIntosh. I know you're here. <laughs> here. Thank you. Mike Feely. Here. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, sharing, I was sharing the agenda. There we go. All right, we'll proceed uh, to the reading of the legal notice. So Amy, if you please. Consistent with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and banning gatherings of more than 10 people, this meeting will be conducted by remote participation to the greatest extent possible. The public may not physically attend this meeting, but every effort will be made to allow the public to view and or listen to the meeting in real time. Persons who wish to do so are invited to click on the following link. If you do not have a camera or microphone on your computer, you may use the following dial-in number, 1-301-715-8592, meeting ID 881-8546-4044, Passcode 778950. Please only use dial in or computer and not both, as audio feedback will distort the meeting. This meeting will be audio and video recorded. One, continued hearings. Two, 21 28, Town of Wakefield Albion Cultural Exchange, application for a special permit under Article uh, 16, Sections 190 through 90. 190-99 and 190-100 of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw to allow a projecting bracket sign. The property is shown as map 12, lot parcels 134C of the assessor's map and is located at 9-11 Albion Street. Three, 21-29, 21-30, 21-31, MBAR, Wakefield, LLC, application for a special permit and site plan approval under Article 4, Section 190-23 of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw to allow for a drive-in bank on the premises, application for a special permit under Article 7, Section 190-36C of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw to allow for reductions in the requirements and or standards for off-street parking and loading related to the proposed bank use. Application for a special permit under Article 7, Section 190-37A of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw to allow off-street parking areas to be provided on another lot in the same ownership as the principal use. The property is shown as map 18, lot parcel 6E, sorry, 6C6E of the assessor's map and is located at 500 Main Street. Four, 21-32, 21-33, James F. Hutton and Joan H. Hutton, application for a determination and or finding with respect to a continuation and extension of non-conforming uses under Article 9, Section 190-50 of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw to allow an addition onto the existing dwelling. Application for a variance under Article 10, Section 190-66, from the requirements of Article 6 and Table 2 of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw related to an addition to be constructed on the existing dwelling. The property is shown as Map 23, Lot Parcels 134 of the Assessor's Map and is located at 111 Greenwood Ave, Board of Appeals. Thank you, Amy. Okay, so just before we get started, again, for anyone as reminders and anyone else who might be relatively new to these Zoom meetings, um, as, as Amy said, the meeting is being recorded, will be posted on um, the town's website within several business days after the meeting. Um, as host, uh, I have um, allowed all the participants to share their screens so different applicants um, can share themselves um, during the meeting when the uh, time is right. I've also allowed all of you enabled you to mute and unmute yourself, so I shouldn't have to do that. Um, 
one thing I did do, and we've been doing, um, I think across other town board meetings is disabling the chat feature. Uh, we, we need and want all of the discussion to take place in the meeting room um, and not in sidebar chats. Okay, so um, that has been disabled. Um, as we would during um, a, any public hearing, uh, the applicant will present whatever testimony plans and information they have to share. We'll discuss it with the board ask questions, read any sort of correspondence we have from other town boards. And once we've done that, we would uh, we would then entertain public testimony. Until that time, I would ask that all members of the public please remain on mute. Um, and when I uh, open it up to public, uh, you can raise your hand in the Zoom uh, app um, and I will call on you as best I can in the order in which you raise them. Um, and then any votes that we end up taking um, at the end of any um, application or meeting um, will be done by a roll call vote. So with that, uh, we'll get back to our agenda. As Amy said, we have several continued hearings this evening. Um, we've been asked by representing attorneys if we could take them slightly out of order as listed in the program um, and take up <clears throat> one of the continued hearings at the top. And that is uh, case 21-27, Christopher J. Murphy at 10 Otis Street. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's my hearing. Um, Michael yes. McCarthy representing Mr. Murphy. Uh, who's here on Zoom, and I believe Mr. Littlefield is partners as well. This is our second hearing that relates to the property at 10 Otis Street. Uh, we're looking for a finding. The property is located in a general residence district, has 75 feet of frontage, which is why it's non-conforming, which is why we need the finding. It has over 8,000 square feet, which is conforming. Um, briefly, because it is our second hearing, uh, we're, uh, my client is proposing to raise the existing non-conforming uh, from, a, from a, a setback standpoint, single family home, as well as a large garage and wooden platform behind the garage, which is also non-conforming from a structural, from a um, setback standpoint and to construct a two family house that would be conforming dimensionally and use wise. Um, I made the point at the last hearing that the, uh, that the proposed use is not only allowed, it's consistent uh, within the neighborhood uh, the other two residences on the same side of Otis Street within uh, the block of uh, Crescent and Pleasant, the two family homes. Uh, to the right, if you look at it from the street, is a four to eight unit apartment uh, building with a three unit dwelling behind it and a multi um, unit apartment building, which is more or less across from the fire station, across from that. And then, of course, across from 10 Otis is the senior, the uh, town of Wakefield Senior Housing Project. Uh, so at the last hearing, I think um, there was some compliments about the design, but there were some concerns about the function of the parking as it was proposed to the side of the lot. Um, there was also, I think Amy had asked the question about whether you could, whether we could reduce the footprint of the building, make a little bit more room for the parking. So we've done both. Uh, we, we promised that we would take a look at everything we have. Uh, we've come back and I think Steve from Phoenix Engineering is on, so I'll defer to him in a moment. But uh, the proposal now, has reduced footprint of the building. Uh, Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it came back from the front three feet on the building itself and one foot on the porch. And we have presented two different parking designs. Um, one with the parking in the middle, which is the preference for my client. Um, and then uh, alternative, uh, the other alternative is for parking along the sides. And that's been expanded. Originally, you'll recall uh, all the parking was proposed on the side there was concerned about some of the width over there, but I think um, what's been accomplished is um, you know, there, there's more width provided, but still the, um, the central parking option, the central driveway is the, is the preferred option. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to defer to Phoenix, to Steve in Phoenix. He can just touch on the changes quickly um, or as quickly as you'd like, and um, we can move from there. Okay, and he's- Steve's on. And prepared to share, we can share the- uh, yeah. Steve? Yeah. Actually, Mike, I'm I'm here. I can I can. Oh, here. Okay. Thanks. Have it on my screen. Okay. Um, can you all see it? Yes, we can. Okay. So the rendering, um, we it, it stays the same. It's what we did show you before, um, but by going into the building and taking out uh, depth, we're able to push the building further back on the lot and it cleared so that the porch is no longer interfere with the parking. This is the option where uh, the four cars are located in the center. Um, 
there's even space beyond where we thought we could, maybe could change the paving or do some landscaping just to soften that in that area. Uh, but this takes away that issue of being able to open the car doors and get out and take a walkway um, into the porch. Um, then we took the same um, footprint and again showed the parking on the sides, which is I believe where we were at our last meeting. Th these areas are a paving change. So the walkway would say be like pavers, this could be blacktop. Uh, here we were proposing we would take the stairs to the porch and push them inboard. Um, that allows more space for this door swing on this car. Um, but everything on the porch could stay the same and entrance into the units can stay the same. Within the units, um, it's hard to see, but, but uh, it removed 325 square feet of living space inside each unit. So a total of 650 square feet in the building. And, and because I was able to do it in, like incrementally, so say like a foot through here, a foot through here, and then a foot through here, Okay. Um, it kept the intent of the plans the same, uh, just making sure. So this law, for instance, is smaller. Uh, these bedrooms each lost um, a foot uh, in this master bedroom lost a foot. Um, so I tried to make it so that everything is still functional um, as far as the plan goes. Um, but again, allowed me to, to push the, um, the building back on the site. So what would be helpful to go back to the site plans? <clears throat> sure, I think so. Okay. Um, so that I can uh, scroll between, but this is the option with the parking on the side. Um, and on this sheet will be the option with the parking in the center, which I believe the clients are, are most comfortable with. And in either one, the, the house, the structure is pushed back on the lot. That's so the correct. So, so it's 20 feet. Correct. It stays within the setback, but it's able to just push back from the street. Okay, because I thought we talked before about pushing it back, and it was, Mike, I thought you said something we, uh, about if, if we moved it back, we'd need a variance or something, and that brought we, other things into play. Well, but, that's true, uh, but I think what Peter accomplished was he reduced the depth of the um, of the of, of the footprint of the house. He made it three feet shorter within and one feet on the porch. So that allowed the space to move the building back without violating the setback. Which is 20 in this zone, right? Correct. In okay. the rear. Yeah. So the building is fully conforming from a setback perspective. Actually, from every perspective, the only thing that's uncon not conforming is the width of the lot. Yep. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Yep. And that's all green space all out front except for the middle strip. Correct. Okay. Is it, is it going to be a, um, a blacktop or what's it going to be for that uh, parking area? Mike, I'm assuming this would be blacktop. Blacktop, blacktop, yeah. possible. Yeah. Is there a rationale why the center parking is preferred? I think the the client is is, is on and can certainly speak uh, for themselves to himself, but I believe it, it's just con they, they consider it just easier to work with and more functional. Yeah, because to me, it, it is a pretty good, it's a good design. And now the most prominent feature of the site will be the parked cars there. So I think you're, you're losing out. But. Well, we would defer to the board. Uh, that, that's the client preference, Tom. Um, but certainly both options are presented. Um, and uh, whatever the pl pleasure of the board is, you know, both options are acceptable. One is preferred, but both are acceptable. Peter, did you try moving the um, the porches to the middle? We did, we did, but it 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 actually doesn't work. It's a roof. It's up in the roof when the gables come into each other. Okay. That's what was happening way way up on the upper level. Okay. But by having the uh, by having the parking in the middle, it gives you the opportunity to get shrubbery or trees along each between each border basically might help soft, continue to soften it a bit than doing it this way, which I think you lose that opportunity entirely with the, with the parking on either or either side. This, this, it'll come up for a second. There you go. Yeah, 
and you still have a little green space. I mean, just more to this. the sides. Yeah, it could be some landscaping, some some lawn area. Yeah, I don't have a strong preference either way. I would defer to what the client wants. I think they accomplished what I thought was our primary concern when that was up against the, the lot lines and they were able to scale the building and move it back and gain some a little space. And I, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to align with what the preference is here and give us some an opportunity, on, as, as Jim said, on the edge just to maybe landscape and soften that and still have some yep. green space. So. The other thing is that um, shoveling this one huge driveway basically and shoveling it off the side might be easier than, than doing it on the sides. Peter, Mike Feely, um, what are the, I, I know you have representative cars in there. I don't know if they're trucks. What, what are the sizes of those? The, I mean, it doesn't look like there's a lot of leeway. <laughs> These were actually put in by um, the site guys, but and it's hard for me to tell what they are. They're, they're pretty. They're pretty wide. I looked at it in the context of the um, and the view on the side park and, and where there's ten feet of pavement. Um, the cars take it pretty pretty much up the whole the whole space. So those cars, are, I think, are, are a little bit large, which I guess is conservatively good from a conservative perspective. But um, but they're they're, they're pretty big. Um, so normally, parking spaces are nine by eighteen, right? In right. Parking lot. This is twenty. So it's as if two cars are parked in a parking lot with enough space in between in theory to open the doors, assuming they're not yeah. both getting out at the same time. But right. uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Give, give another thought basically to the fact that in the center, as opposed to the outside edges, um, you got two driveways on either side basically. So you're, you're putting an exit when you're on the property lines, basically pretty close to the drive outs for the other two abutting buildings by putting it in the middle you get a better dis distance and spacing basically between um, driveway to driveway curb cut to curb cut that's the curb cuts my question too so what's the the curb cut that's there now what's going to happen to that is a new sidewalk going to go in or yeah, oh, hi, Amy. Um, yeah, the, right now where it is, the, the driveway is to the right of this property over here. And actually the whole front of sidewalk there is all decrepit, really. It's all broken up and um, not in very good shape. So instead of the cut being right over to on the right hand side there, we would obviously just that would become curbing and, uh, and then the, just the middle curb would be there. Okay. So new vertical then, granite curbing uh, along the, the frontage. Yeah, and the then we cuts. replace all the sidewalk and make it back to, you know, um, good quality. Because right now, like I say, it's, it's all broken up and uneven. So we'll re obviously re replace and repave that whole front uh, sidewalk area and, you know, be in a lot better condition than it is right now. By the time you get through with uh, new services into this, there'll be no sidewalk, basically. So it's going to have to be replaced. Yeah. Curbing Curbing is all going to have to be reset to, to this plan, basically. There's probably enough pieces there to do that um, and reset it so that at least there's some real curbing there as opposed to um, something that's just a bump. Yes, yeah. It, like I say, the way it is right now, it's it's in, in real rough shape. I mean, I guess one of the benefits for the digging up, it looks like the gas and the water services are right next to each other in a sewer. Looks like it's not too far off and located right about in the middle of that property. But again, you know what, that would all be replaced with new curbing and, and all new sidewalks and uh, to a much you know nicer standard than it is now. Okay, and I do see it's small, but I've got my copy zoomed in. It does say vertical granite curbing, so. That's good. It's consistent. It's kind of what's already there along the street. So, yeah. And I think, yeah, I partnered to Keith and looked around. We, we drove around to a lot of different, um, some of the newer duplexes and stuff. And a lot of them had that driveway in the middle uh, situation on a lot of them that we saw. So it seemed like something the, the board had uh, liked before. 
and I, I talked to uh, what we like to do too is, and I mentioned before, as far as the trees and everything, we're going to try to save, you know, as much as that uh, growth trees that we can and we replace anything that was there. If we'd like to have a border, probably maybe some more bushes and stuff for privacy. But, uh, we, you know, anytime we can keep any of the growth, the older growth there, we, you know, we're going to try to do our best to do that too. Okay. So that'd be something typically we would have as a condition um, in, in, you know, in a, in a decision that try to maintain trees, any that are lost, any of the established trees that do get lost for one reason or another get replaced so that it ensures. And that's, I, yeah, I'm a big tree guy. <laughs> I, okay. I like having I think it adds it and said that with the trees and they're so big, we try to probably put a few more bushes in between to form a barrier. Um, even though I'm, you know, on both sides, we have just driveways and everything, but we want to, you know, make it a little more private when we'd add some bushes in between where we could do to, to really form a good barrier between them. Okay. And where this is a finding and not a full site plan review, we're not going through a full landscape review and all the rest. Right. But uh, right. that's, in, it's encouraging to hear you say that. And we'd certainly be proponents of, of whatever you can do and work with your neighbors and, and, uh, you know, yeah, I, I did talk to one of the, we walked around because it's rentals, it was tough. But we talked to the, uh, uh, one of the young ladies that lived next door to us and, and explained to them, you know, what we were doing. And again, you know, mentioned to them, if anything with trees, we're going to try to keep it maintained. Because I know it creates a lot of, uh, it, it just gives an old, old feel and to keep old trees there. So, you know, we we'll probably have to trim a lot of uh, branches that are on the property growing on. But as much as we can, we're going to try to uh, keep anything that's there and replace anything that, that gets taken down. Thanks, Chris. Yep. All right, any other board members, any comments, questions on the proposed plan and to satisfy what we're looking for? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, then, if there's nothing else at this time, uh, we'll open up the public testimony. If anyone has a comment or a question, again, uh, I've got the participant list open here. Please raise your hand in the room, and we'll call on you in, in order. We'll ask you to just state your name and address for the record. Rolling the list, not seeing any hands going up. Okay, seeing none, we'll close it to public testimony. So back to the board. So again, Mike, what you need. Uh, we need simply a finding uh, that the proposed um, revision to, to the lot is uh, not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming uh, condition. Well, it's not increasing any non-conformities, right? It's and removing all non-conformities. Yeah, right. there, no, there are no, the only non-conformity that will remain is the lot width. Other than that, that we're removing two non-conforming structures. Right. Okay. Any other final comments, questions, board members, before we proceed? What appears to be a vote? I guess I, I recommend the center parking i don't know where everybody else is on this yeah we probably should do that so that they yeah. can proceed and we ensure the final plan is right. reflects that yep center which would be option what option is that peter which sheet is that that would be option a option a as shown yep okay. 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 Any board member wish to make a motion at this time? The chair would entertain it. Dave, I'm not on this. I wasn't here last time. Greg, do you have wording? See a better review. 
Yeah, it would just be that the proposed condition is to find that the proposed condition is on, on as depicted on option A would not be substantially more detrimental than the existing condition. I did tell you all to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys hear me? Yes, we can, Greg. Okay, I'm having problems with it. I don't know what's going on. It switches back and forth. Um, do we want to also want to do the, you know, it's not substantially more detrimental. And if it were to be found to be? Two prong, yeah. In fact, they're making it better, but I think both prongs are appropriate. The wording of the second prong, I'll make the motion. Yep. Um, All right, Greg. One second. I have mine up. What's the um, the date on your sheet here, Peter? I think, it's, I think these, well, let's tell us up here. They're all dated 1 4 21. All right. I would move to find that the, um, you scroll down, that the, the uh, site plan is provided on site plan option A parking as provided by Phoenix Architects. Mm -hmm. In their plan dated 1421 is not substantially more detrimental uh, to the neighborhood than the existing conditions. And if it were found to be, uh, what's the wording on this one here? Um, so I think great. The first, the first one would be that there's no new nonconformity, and then second, if there were found to be, it would not be substantially more detrimental. Ah, uh, gotcha. That's helpful. Uh, all right, so I meant my motion to be that there is no, um, well, now there's no increased nonconformity. It actually is decreasing all nonconformities. And if this was found to be increasing nonconformity, it's not substantially, not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Okay. Shouldn't we attach the uh, reference basically to Phoenix's rest of architectural drawings? Yeah, it's it's all the drawings dated one four with the parking option A being the, the one we're approving. Yeah, I'll yeah. make sure it's part of the decision. <laughs> okay, that's your motion, Greg. Second. <laughs> and then she. Yeah, where is the sheet? There we go. Okay. So voting members, Dave, Jim, Amy, Joe, and Greg. Okay. All right. So all in favor, Greg? Yes. Amy? Yes. Joe? Yes. Jim? Yes. And I am yes. So that is unanimous. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Thank okay. you very much. You appreciate it. Uh, Yep, thank You're you. welcome. So, Michael, one thing before we go and close this hearing, um, appreciate you sending the plans when you did. That that was helpful. We will need a, a paper copy that I will need to stamp as the final plans. I'll get them right over to Gail. So if you can get them over to Gail, and then she'll let me know, and I'll stamp them just so we get those in the official file. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you all. All thank right. You. All right. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you all. I think we're proceeding back to the top of the uh, order and continued hearings. The next one being cases dash 2122, 2112, 2113, and 2114, 610 Salem Street, Wakefield LLC at 610 Salem Street. And for that, I believe we have attorney Brian McGrail and team. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, for the record, Attorney Brian McGrail representing the applicant, 610 Salem Street, Wakefield, LLC. Um, I can see uh, Paul Caggiano, the principal of the entity, uh, is with us tonight. Uh, also, uh, Peter Sandors and Steve uh, DeFuria are here on our architectural team. And I believe John Ogren is here uh, on um, site civil. Um, 
to refresh the board's memory, uh, we were given some homework assignments um, at the last uh, meeting that was continued to tonight. Uh, specifically, we were asked to look at uh, the following uh, to provide some detail on the garage windows in the lighting and how that could be screened. Um, we were asked to provide some details on proposed materials. Uh, we were asked to provide a roof layout plan for um, some of the um, equipment that will be on the roof. We were asked to provide some balcony drainage detail. Um, we were asked to provide cornice band and window sections for a closer look at how they would uh, be portrayed on, on the building. We're also asked to look into lo the location of the elevator uh, and the elevator penthouse type thing that works with the building and the impact that that would have on the elevations that we were showing. We were asked to get some information on the water meter room and where that would be located and how it would look. Uh, we were asked to provide some lighting specification details. And also uh, the board asked us to do an elevation um, of the building uh, coming from Wakefield to see how the impact on the building next door would be. So I think we're, I'm happy to report that we, I think we have all that information, um, hopefully to uh, the satisfaction of the board. And if not, then we'll, we will make sure we get it. Um, so Peter um, Sandoz, Peter, you're going to handle this one as far as uh, the presentation on those issues? Yeah. Um, if you can present it, I, I'd like to talk about it. Yes, I can. Um, that would be helpful. Yeah, I know. I know that we in our packet we show the renderings yep. first, and I'd like to go. Yep. To kind of not talk about those first, but jump into okay. the. Okay, you got it, Peter. So if I can, I think I can get control of the screen. Let me know if everybody sees that. Yeah. Okay. That work. Yes. Okay. So, Pete, do you have anything you want to do on this on this page, or no? For now? I'd like to come back to it, but first. Okay. To the to the parking level plan. Okay, so you tell me when, Pete. Yeah, I think it's coming. It's after the yep. materials. The twenty one business days or twenty one days. <laughs> there we go. So, so this in this plan, um, we are now showing on the right hand side near stairway B, a water meter room that didn't exist before. Uh, Joe. Hold on, Pete. Mr. Chair, I, th I think somebody's not muted. I'm looking. <laughs> I think there was some noise. I thought okay. I uh, I couldn't hear what he was saying. That's all. That's all. I can, no problem. There it is. Yeah, where is that? <laughs> Okay. Are we good? Is that better? Yep. Thank you. It's at this level, which is the parking level, uh, with discussions with John Ogren, where the water comes into the site. We located a water meter room near stairway B and it happens between um, in the pathway that exists between the front parking spaces and the rear parking spaces. You can see it there, it's a linear room. It's approximately four feet wide by 20 feet long. Um, would have to be heated, but that's where we, we were asked about where we would bring the water meters in and that's where we thought we would do it. Um, I believe that's the only change to this level. When, um, Brian, if now you scroll down to the uh, elevation of the building. Keep going down? Yep, to the front. Oh, here's the, we can talk about that. If, I'm sorry, Brian, go, you can go back to the roof plan if you want. So okay. here, here I, I went up onto the roof and started to do uh, a roof. This is up all, above the fourth floor, a roof drainage plan, as well as locating uh, up on the upper left, uh, scuttle from the stairwell to the roof, and also locating in the uh, center where the two buildings meet in the center, the elevator shaft, um, so that we could see that. And now that's incorporated in the elevations and the renderings as well. Yes, right there. So now if you go to the next page, Brian. 
took time to go, I'm looking at the proposed front elevation, I went through the building and I took um, six inches out of each floor of that building. And then I took one foot out of the upper floor of the building. And I did that so that I could reduce the building by uh, three feet. And I, so I brought the height of the building down three feet and then I added a parapet of three feet. So rather than have the parapet go above um, what was proposed before, which was um, 45 feet, I kept the building at 45 feet and took the, the mass out of the building. And that, that parapet up above is allowing me to hide uh, the HVAC units and, and about 90% of the elevator shaft. You can see a lit, about two feet of it um, is, is sticking up uh, where it hits, but it's back, remember, from the corner. The, these are flat elevations. Um, that, that was, a, I, I thought, a way to do a couple of things. It helped me reduce the mass a little bit of the building and helped me do the hide. I also took the time to pull that upper parapet, even though it's in the same material as the fourth floor, I'm insetting it almost a foot so that it's not one high wall. There'd be a break line and then the metal, um, standing seam metal uh, would continue again. Uh, and get, again, to break the magnitude of, of that uh, fourth floor. Um, we took, um, if we go, let's see, go to the next page, Brian. On the right elevation uh, to break this facade because it's very visible from Salem Street at certain points, I added um, the uh, um, angular bays and the two front units, so there's two of them. Um, and that helps break that. So they're just not the square base uh, of before. I went through and added all the scuppers to the, to the um, decks, the inset balconies uh, to make sure that they could be drained out. I looked at my floor plan and I can vent all of my dryer systems uh, to the side of these uh, square bays in, in almost every condition, in every condition. I'll then vent everything else out uh, through the roof behind the parapet. Also took into account in one, one of our discussions, we talked about the bays being uh, dark, the material inside there being dark. So we decided to use the light siding uh, inside the balconies. Uh, and I'd also like to propose um, that we do recessed lighting in those balconies controlled by the building so that at night the balconies are all lit um, down. Uh, from above, uh, a way to bring light in there without having anything really on the face of the building. Um, so now, Brian, I think we can go back to the, if we can start at the beginning, back on the uh, renderings. And it takes a minute to load the PDF sometimes. There we go. So updating the um, this front elevation uh, now um, we've taken we've taken the time to pick the color, the bays, which is a black uh, forest green or dark forest green, a Benjamin Moore color. We've picked the charcoal color of the um, vertical um, siding, metal siding on the roof. We've picked the uh, siding uh, on the edge of the, the party plank siding in that color. There's a whole sheet of this. Also pick the bricks called out the limestone banding that separates the bricks from the siding above, adjusted the height of this rendering so that it uh, now reflects what the um, AutoCAD plans are doing. And you can see in the, in the center there above the door, you can see a little bit of the, um, the elevator in this rendering. So if you go to the next rendering, Brian. Oh, oh Brian, we also showed the existing uh, building just so we can compare what's there now to what we're proposing. And I know it shows that building in the background a little bit. Um, that's up on the left there. Here is the, um, here is the rendering as you're coming down Salem Street. We rendered it with the trees uh, in the same time of year. Uh, in bloom and, and a fair amount of the building is shaded, not only from the trees on the site, but also the ones uh, to our neighbor's building. Uh, but now the bays are included um, on the right side elevation. So they kind of wrap and add a little bit of detail to that elevation. Um, Brian, to the next one, please. 
Here we went back to our winter scene, again, updated it um, to show those um, angular bays uh, that were added in and, and adjust the heights as well. Um, this, this, I think, Amy, we talked about this before, but because of the color, the lighting, the coloring of the siding looks different. Uh, that's why we'll have in the, on the sheet coming, we're actually going to show you what the actual siding color is. And then here, we, we put this in purposely, but to show when those trees are in full bloom, if you pull back a little bit on Salem Street, that's what you see of our building uh, coming down Salem Street going towards Linkfield, very hidden by those trees. Um, but we thought it was worth showing so we could all see what, what they, you see it, but it's hated, obviously. We, we then went in and, and began to render um, each elevation so that, because it, it came to question, what does the rear, built, rear of the building look like? This, this is the rear of the building uh, now rendered um, so that it's clear that it does match um, the front and the left and the right of the building. Um, can you go to the next sheet, Brian? Yep. Yep. Uh, where am I here? I'm trying to see what. I'm trying to see the um, the right side elevation. So it's coming up, I think. It should be it, Pete. It should be coming up it's on my screen. Proposed graphic right elevation. Okay. Maybe it's lagging. I'm still in, I'm still seeing. Oh, there. I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. So here's here's the right elevation. Um, uh, with the two uh, angular bays in the front uh, and the two square bays in the back. We tried it first doing, using one bay, but it, I don't know, it just didn't look uh, symmetrical. So I ended up adding, you know, changing two of them um, and again, adjusted everything uh, for the heights as they now are. Um, is our next sheet the material sheet, Brian? Yep. So in the material sheet, we called out a flagstaff brick which has a lot of red, but picks up some of the tans, um, our tan gray uh, of the hardy plank siding, which is called cobblestone, the dark forest green MDO on the bays. We uh, had the building reviewed by Pella. It's a Pella lifestyle window um, in black, um, as we showed in our elevation. Um, just to scroll up a little bit, Brian. And then we went ahead and did uh, the corrugated medical, metal, metal siding in dark bronze, the standing seam um, metal roof in a black. And something I was going to propose, which is to do um, a perforated metal screening system uh, over the garage window. So even though there's going to be an aluminum uh, metal frame that looks like a window frame there, I'd like Put this screening behind on the inside of that um, to screen the light um, that'll be uh, existing in the night um, in the garage and diffuse it. Next to that, I picked um, an LED two by two um, lighting fixture that'll be used in the garage to light it. Um, I think, um, scroll to the next page, Brian. Uh, the images of everybody's um, camera is blocked. I was trying to see where my details of the, uh, we did a uh, detail of the parapet and how it would be built. Hold on. See the page. You, tell me the, you tell me what sheet number you want. Pete. That's the last yeah. sheet. Okay. It is, it's the last sheet. That's right, next to the rear elevation. That's it? Yeah. Yep. So it shows how we uh, we intend to build that out of um, out of Azac and, and blocking um, to show uh, that's the parapet that exists between um, the first three floors uh, and the fourth floor. Uh, we showed a, a window detail, which is calling a one by six Azac trim around the windows with a one by two sill, kind of for a traditional framing of the double hung windows. The one page back, Brian. Um, we show the detail of uh, the aluminum frame at the garage, the limestone surround uh, there for trim in the brickwork. 
and also the detail of when the brick uh, work comes up, how it meets the limestone cap uh, before going to the um, hardy plank siding above. So that that is really the um, the cornice detail at the lower at floor one, then this cornice detail at floor three. Cornice detail at floor four is really the inset of the uh, standing seam metal that's then wrapping to the roof above. And let me see if I. I believe I hit everything. You good, Pete? Yeah, I think so. Great. So I'm I'm happy, uh, Mr. Chair. I think you know um, we've tried to, but uh, we try have tried to be responsive to the request of the board, um, and certainly if we missed it any way, we're happy to try again. But hopefully we 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 were responsive. Um, I know we went through these slides pretty, pretty uh, quickly. If if any board members would like to see something more, um, take a, a better look at something. I'm happy to go to that appropriate slide. Uh, I Peter chipped our yes. If we can address the lighting in the garage a little bit, I know um, from what I watched last week, our last meeting, there was some concern about lighting. Um, in giving that some thought. Can we do, can you do a low level safety light for 90% of the night when there's nobody in the garage and then have different occupancy centers? So as somebody's walking out to their car, it, it doesn't light the whole garage, but the area that they're going to? Yes. So that you're saying, you're saying there's a certain level of low lighting that exists all the time. I think you have to have some sort of safety. Yeah, lighting. I do too. And, but that will be very muted, very, just so you can see. I don't know what you think you need for that. But then as somebody comes down at 11 o'clock, a visitor or whomever, and is walking through the garage, all the lights don't need to come on. They're just a series of lights that need to come on brighter to get them to their uh, car. So, um, yep. I, I think we can be very creative with all the new stuff that's out there for lighting and for occupancy sensors and all motion sensor if you're if you're thoughtful in your planning sure. it can really help with with light pollution so i think it's a great idea and then then we're it's it's energy efficient too we're not it, it, it is and and quite frankly you know from uh, i'll use 11 p.m. to 5 a.m., there may be no activity in the garage. Right. So why do you need to have bright lights? Right. And and I think that will help with some people's opinion, you know, concerns about, geez, what these things are going to glow. And now that you've done the screening, it's even going to be that much more subdued uh, in there. Okay. So I, so Brian, that to me would go into probably the ops manual that uh, occupancy sensor lighting program needs to be in place for the garage. Mm -hmm. And Chip, Chip, are you going beyond just zoned, go into a more um, sub zone type of thing where you, as you walk lights ahead of you come on? Yes. As opposed to a whole like zone come on. Yeah, I mean, it. it, it I, you know, I'm not the electrician to know how to wire, but like, so not that half of it comes on, but literally X amount, a quarter of it comes on. And then as you leave that, that goes off and the next one comes on. Um, they're, they're very creative now, Jim, as you know, that and efficient. So it's just making sure that whoever's doing the electrical design understands the concept. Yeah. Peter, okay. Peter, yes. Um, you've raised the pair. You've raised a parapet that's three feet. Did you say? Correct. And is that parapet set back from the edge of the building? It is. All right. How much? It's about a foot. All right. I'm not sure. I'm not sure uh, whether that's enough break, or whether you know where we've asked you to do something basically to block the elevator. Um, 
override. Um, I'm almost wondering whether it would be better to be a foot down from that and to be two foot. You get a little more of the elevator override, but not not increase the appearance of the of the height of the building. So height bring so sure. bring the parapet down a foot, but inset it a foot more. Uh, no, I, I I not sure how the shadow lines would show up, Peter. It yeah. might be it might be a foot, might be just just fine. Uh, yeah. uh, but that it, it it ends up basically, even though you've done gymnastics on the lower floor, it it's just a black mass up there that um, makes the building a little heavier on the top. I guess is what my concerns are. And the other thing is, while I'm talking about it, is the elevator override. Um, the building that was just finished over on North Avenue, um, the sister to the other one that you were involved in the design has got a huge um, exhaust on the top of the elevator shaft. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's nothing we ever saw, it's there. Um, there is a requirement by code to have an exhaust on the top, on the top so far, some distance from the roof top in order for the fire department to vent the elevator, but that looks excessive. So I'd ask whether there's anything gonna end up on this one similar to that. So okay. even though it's a penthouse, there's still some sort of rated exhaust shaft that's for the fire department to use to ventilate. Okay. The other, th the other thing I note is that it, very nicely, the garage doors are painted out basically to match the brick. So we should make sure we get a color for the garage doors that at least will, um, I guess, hide it somewhat when they're closed. And I guess I'd, I want some more dimensions. Um, I'd like some of the parapets for the top of this building and some information around the bays and the bay windows as to how much they stick out. You know, they could be sticking out from all I know, anywhere from a foot to six inches. I'd like, yeah. more, I'd like some more information on, on that sort of stuff. And the cornice one that you showed in your detail has no has no dimensional detail. It just mentions the construction components, that's all. We'll, we'll dimension that, no problem. Thank you. Yep. Okay, other board members, any comments, questions? Greg. Greg, your audio's went not Better? That's better. Weird, it keeps kicking me to a different microphone. Um, lost my train of thought. Oh, Peter, did you say those recessed balconies are gonna be lit controlled by the building so they'll all be on? Yes, I, I, it came to my mind that if I could do recessed lighting in the balconies and have that controlled by the building so that all the balconies would be lit every night. I thought that would be kind of kind of a nice way to get the facade lit um, but, and not have dark holes of the balconies. No one's at home or if no one turns their light on, um, that would kind of kill my idea. But I thought if it could be controlled by the building, um, then we guarantee that it would be lit at night. So to that to that, Peter, I would suggest that that goes in the operation manual as well as okay. to the timing of that. Yeah. And then somebody may want to, and then you're going to have to have the ability to override that. Right. How are you, how's the use of the balcony being managed? And is there separation between units? Up, to, I couldn't tell from the floor plan whether there was any separation uh on the balconies between units you time up on the fourth floor yeah yeah that's a good that's a good point um, well, and, I, and i guess going back to the lit balconies too i mean as someone who you know had rented apartments for quite a while it seems interesting from a tenant standpoint you know, i don't know if i would want mine lit when i'm either when i'm not using it or someone across from me 
you know, if you're on that L there, someone across, you know, you're trying to sleep, say, you know, you might be a nurse or someone shift work and you're trying to sleep early. Do you really want every other balcony shining? At, you know, have to buy blackout windows because the building controls the balcony. Well, maybe it can be, maybe it can just be very light. You know, it doesn't have to be excessive lighting. And maybe to Chip's point, if it's a low level of light, um, then it would be some, but if I'm there and I'm going to go out and use my balcony, then overriding it and the lights would come up. Maybe that's that kind of thing where it's, it's just a dim light. Uh, but, but Chip on the fourth floor, the building is, is providing uh, separation on those balconies. And is that on your plan? I've got the fourth floor plan up here. I don't know if that yeah. I mean, the hatched areas of the balconies, right? Yes, that's right. So I'm just seeing, you know, these wings of the building is a lit, I suppose there's that extra couple of feet. So Peter, where, where, where are the, so are, are your pavers the only thing people have access to? Yes, that's the way I would have it. Yes. Okay. So the wrap around in the corner. Yeah, so they're not going to like walk in along the edge of something. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so to the comment about lighting on the on the porches or balconies, um, I'm not a renter. I haven't been for a while, but I do uh, go to Florida once in a while. I like to sl sit on a balcony, look out at the beach in the evening, watch the stars go by, and all of a sudden I can't see the scar stars or look at look at the sunset because I got this bloody light on in my mm -hmm. eye. You know, I, I kind of, I get where you're going, Peter, but I, I, I recommend just throw it on a switch and leave it to the tenant. Yeah, this is the first time I've heard a development we're even talking about that and we're probably spend enough time talking about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's your building, but I just, I, I would leave it up to the tenants. And if, if we're trying to look for some sort of accent lighting, maybe sconces or something we've done on other properties can be examples, but in a, in a limited way, in a, in a low lighting kind of way. But I, I I would concur. Let's leave it up to the tenants. Yeah, I mean, there could be, there could be ground lighting um, similar yeah. to what happens at Four Corners with that apartment where some of the uh, planted areas basically have some up lighting, something that just you know, accent the ground level as opposed to making a deal of the rest of the building. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that would make it look like it has a halo or a UFO landing on it or something like that. So I, I, would, I would go for less is better. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I might suggest that we're at the point of this project uh, it seems like we're into really quite minutiae at this point that um, I'm at the point where I, you know, would like to think about what the conditions are going to be and, uh, you know, remember what the relief is that's being requested. Uh, so with your permission, I'd like to ask Mr. McGrail for the next meeting to start putting some of that stuff together so we can just make sure we're, we're there and to I'd also offer a thought that if Peter and Jim could meet offline or however during the next couple of weeks to kind of get these details straightened out that Jim would feel comfortable with and work through those details that maybe we won't have to spend so much time on the, again, what I would call the minutiae, something that most people aren't going to understand shadow lines and things like that, but I know they're important to Jim and make these projects worthwhile. So I would suggest with your permission, maybe we ask that they kind of do that real fine tuning uh, over the next couple of weeks offline and then come back with, with a good final presentation and we can wrap this thing up. That works for me, Jim. Put a bow Thank on you. it. You, you good with that? Yep. Okay. No, I would agree. That way we're not iterating on a couple of different versions of that. Just next time it has everything you feel you need, Jim, to, and we're, and, and yeah, as Chip said, we're done with that, that aspect of it. Yeah, I mean, Chip, there was a lot that we covered in the last meeting. The board members- No, I saw that, but I think several we're- Several concerns about the look. So we just have to make sure 
if folks yeah. are comfortable moving forward beyond this point with where the building is, the changes that Peter articulated, uh, the colors, the materials, folks still aren't, you know, comfortable and ready to move forward, then even talking conditions is premature, right? We're just not there unless the but, it, but at this point, made. but at this point, Mr. Chairman, I would suggest that if people aren't comfortable, there's, there's got to be something big that they're not comfortable with, not the cornice detail that Jim is talking about. I just don't hear that. I'm not well, hearing that. Well, that's and I what, didn't hear it. I mean, last week there was some lighting and, you know, there were some general comments, but there weren't specifics. So I guess that's where I'm coming from. Um, let me just jump in for a second. Um, I appreciate the work that Pete has done on it. I think that what you've been doing has been helpful for myself. I'm not 100% on board with this project. Um, so just putting that out there at this point. I just think, um, I know that we're talking about how it looks right now, but the massing and the size and the traffic and the impact on the town and everything like that is still really holding me back. I actually feel better um, given what I saw tonight. Um, I was concerned about that side, the right side of the building when you're leaving Wakefield into Linfield. I thought the extra renderings helped. I thought the work that Peter did help and seeing what, what the reality is with the trees out there and what it's actually gonna look like. So taking that perspective further back actually helped me. So I feel pretty good about it. I mean, I guess my, Amy, to, to, I guess I'd like to know what, I mean, we had the traffic advisory group look at it. They say there's gonna be no impact. So I guess I'm kind of curious as to what you're not comfortable with in regards to traffic. The rest of it, you know, that's, a, that's a, another discussion, but I'm, I'm concerned that, you know, we just throw this word traffic out there, yet we've had all the experts look at it and they say there's no impact. Right, and I just, and, and I know that they did the study and everything and that they have their formulas that they use, but again, everything is done with COVID and I know that they've used their percentages to update what things are gonna be. Um, I'm looking at this whole street as a whole picture. I'm not taking just this one, this one project. I'm looking at everything as a whole. And I think that overall, even with the numbers that they've given us, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with it. And I think just the impact on on all, on other resources as well is just it's a little unsettling for me. I, I guess I go back to and I don't think you were on the board at the time, but when we went through Shaw's, right, Shaw's was going to change that whole route, and you know all the lights were going to make it so that we'd never get through. You know, it, it just the the experts know what they're talking about. I guess that's all mm -hmm. I'd say. They they understand it better than we do. So right. that's why that's why I, I I particularly when it comes to traffic rely on what they say because they do it you know right. whether it's Wakefield or Medford or Malden or Somerville or Lexington you know that's what they're working with and that's what they know so the right. rest of it I don't sorry I just I hate the I'm concerned about traffic and no specifics that's my only right. take on traffic. Right. No, and I agree with you. I mean, that's, you know. Yeah, you know what? I, I get it. We're doing, but we've had, um, you know, the town paid for a, a large study on where housing would happen in this town. And, and mm -hmm. Salem Street's one of the streets and Foundry Street's one of the streets. I um, know. I just, I feel like we're getting to a point where it's just getting to be too much. And I know that this was all in the master plan and everything, but at some point, and I've said it before, at what point is enough enough? And I might be at my breaking point with these buildings. I don't know. Well, I mean, the other aspect is it is own business and it is already developed. I mean, this isn't gonna be a park. Nobody's gonna put walking trails and put trees back in here. It, it's already been developed in another use for many years. It's own business and a lot of different things could go in here. If this was an office building, Mm -hmm. would, we, would we be as concerned? I just think something about residential developments have a certain trigger with people. Yeah, I, If this was a building that had offices and people were coming and going nine to five and it was being redone or rebuilt, I, 
I don't know that it would have the same kind of reaction by some people. I, I, it, it doesn't with me, but I just wonder if it does with others. That, yeah, I, I happen to love Baker, residential, right? I love people coming to our town and living in our town and growing our town. I, you know, we're, we're a town inside Route 128. It's, we're very accessible to Boston. We, we're, a, we're a desirable destination. As long as we do it tastefully, I think we're okay. And I think we spend a lot of time making sure that it is tasteful. Mr. Chair, can I just add, can I just add two things, Mr. Chair? Sure, one second, Brian. Yeah, I agree. I just think it's important for us to keep in mind what this corridor already is. We've, we understand, we all drive it. We know it already has traffic issues. We know part of that is out of our control with Linfield um, and we can control the projects that within our boundaries. And we've got two, two of these on our docket tonight. Um, and trying to consider all aspects of the project from massing to traffic to parking and potential overflow parking and what that could do to the We hear all that and we understand and we're trying to work with the applicant to make each of these uh, the best fit that they can be. Um, also understanding what, what alternatives could also be here given its zone for business. And so we, I think we just all have to continue to be mindful of what alternatives could be here, but at the same time, they're not here, this is here. And if we say, we don't think it fits the neighborhood and we are gonna deny it, who knows what may happen down the road. It may end up being something more detrimental, worse for us as a town and it's done by right and we have no say in it. So it's just, please be mindful of, of all of that. I, I know most of you are, but I think it bears reminding. And again, to the members of the public who are here as well. So anyway, I'll, I'll stop. Brian, please go ahead. So I, I was just going to mention two things because an office building was mentioned. An office building on this site in the business owned district, which this is business owned, is allowed by right. So it would not be before your board. Um, it could just be built uh, by uh, the proponent, whoever was doing that, um, to, to their liking, uh, if you will, architecturally, et cetera. Um, the second thing is, um, as far as these types of projects go, go there's, there's, there's basically a mandate from the state at this point for projects of this nature. Um, as a matter of fact, the, the state legislature just enacted um, um, some modifications to uh, the Zoning Act, which is going to require projects like this because one of the projects that an office building doesn't provide on a site like this is, is affordable housing. And there's a dire need for affordable housing in this state and in this town. Um, this project will, will provide five affordable housing units. And that means a lot. Um, I've had the pleasure to attend the lotteries when these affordable units are awarded to families. And I encourage everybody to attend um, at some point because um, it's amazing the excitement um, for the families and, and sometimes the young professionals and the couples and, and every now and then there are children involved in, in the excitement. Um, so, you know, um, these, these are the sites the infill type sites that our housing production plan specifically calls that we submitted as a town that was approved by the planning board um, to the DHCD um, that these were the types of sites that we were we as a community would would support um, for housing and we thought was a good idea for housing. So I just don't want the affordable component to be lost in all of this because it is very important um, not only from a society perspective, but I think from our town perspective uh, to continue to make a commitment in that regard as we have as a town, um, but it's, but you know, we're not there at our 10%. Um, and this will, again, will help us get to that point. Thanks, Brian. Any other board members? Yeah, probably. Haven't spoken? Okay, yep, go ahead, Jim. Probably the planning board when they, when they did the master plan we're thinking that by putting housing on this outer edge near 128, it most people are just going to go onto 128 and not like if this unit was this building was in the middle of town, then it's going to have to go through all the streets around. This is more right on a, a main drag in the form of 128. So putting looking in the master plan to put the housing in here, they probably had that in their mind that this has less of a drag on the on the traffic in our town because it's on the outside edge of the town 
uh, in, in an M128 area where they can escape directly, basically, so to speak, to their business or their work or whatever. Um, I suspect that was in the mix of things at the time. Anyone else? Chair, can you hear me again? We can hear you. Okay, I just think he's ticking me off. I kept I, I, I certainly agree with uh, with everything Mr. McGrail said. One thing I do want to point out, though, is you know we keep harkening back to the housing production plan. Although it certainly is persuasive, that housing production plan did expire over a year ago. Um, so yes, persuasive, but it isn't you know a kind of hammer to get the things done in town as it, you know as it may have once been. Uh, saying that, on the other hand, I do agree. You know, the, the "enough is enough" argument really doesn't hold much water when you see, you know, different studies and different. You know, again, there was an article just this week again how this whole area is in absolute dire need of housing, um, not even at you know necessarily affordable level, just at every level. Um, yes, yeah, so that's really. I mean, the enough is, is enough. Really, there isn't enough. And thank you, Greg. Any other board members with other thoughts or comments at this time? Okay, Brian, can I ask you to just review the boards for, for everyone involved? The, uh, the applications, one obviously was just for the site, uh, the, the special permit for it, but there were a couple others related. If you can just go through those given where we are and just maybe give the, the audience a, a reminder or a fresher. Um, yeah, I can't. John, are you, is John, um, well, one of the things that we, we applied for is uh, potential dimensional parking relief, which I'm going to go through with John because, you know, prior to the next meeting, I think we can, we can probably do a better job at that meeting because I don't think we're going to need that relief, uh, on this project. Uh, as we've mentioned a number of times, we're not looking for relief for the required number of parking spaces. We have an excess number of parking spaces under our under our bylaw. And I think we meet all the setbacks in open areas on parking. I would just wanna do a scrub on the plan, Mr. Chair, to make sure. But that was one form of relief that we were asking for potentially. Yep. Um, and then the other form of relief would just be the standard dimensional uh, as far as we, we are meeting the height requirement, um, I think on maybe one of the um, in the multifamily district, potentially um, one of the setback requirements or, or the setback requirements might need relief. Okay. So if we can just review those, given again, the project has evolved a little bit, the designs have changed a little bit. Correct. If we, if we can go through those next time and just articulate again, where we are today, based on these current plans, what it is that you would be seeking um, relief for and what perhaps you don't no longer need. Um, yes. In light of the initial applications, um, contemplating maybe the need for that. Um, Mr. Chairman, I also don't think we've seen an O&M plan yet. No. Have we, Mr. McGrail? No. So that, you, I mean, I think at this point, you just dust off the cover and change some numbers, but, um, you know, make sure we talk about the lighting in the, in the garage and, you know, Yep. No, all those fun topics. Okay. You know, I think I think you know we all forget about the O and M plan, and when we talk about parking and spacing and all of that, that the snow removal, snow maintenance is very important to these projects. Given that, um, you know, we can't afford to lose spaces, even though there's an excess. You know, all these spaces are important and we've heard how important they are to the neighbors and everything else. So, so we need to make sure that the O&Ms A are followed and B really talk about how they're gonna handle it. And, you know, if they start losing spaces, they gotta bring something in. Doesn't mean they have to take it off site, but they gotta get the spaces back. Yep. As well as landscaping and maintaining a healthy landscape. Obviously. Yeah, all, we all want the site to look good on day one and day a thousand and ten thousand. Right? Yeah, I think we've seen with projects like this and and whatnot that certainly, you know, 
because of the level of housing that it is, they do keep it looking good and it is sprinkled and those things. I, I think we lose it more on the commercial stuff like the trees that have never been replanted at Irving and things like that. So, you know, when, when there's not a need to keep it looking good so people rent or own, uh, it tends to deteriorate a little bit, so. That's my soapbox on that. Well, again, I just, I wanna close on this discussion because again, I think we're looking already ahead to the sort of the punch list for next meeting. And I just wanna make sure we're in a, we're collectively in a position to move forward. Amy has voiced her concerns about maybe not being totally comfortable. Um, they obviously need, you know, four out of five positive votes to approve this. Um, and it, it, you know, the board needs to find certain criteria met to do that, a special permit criteria. Um, and I think we're all familiar with that. So I would, uh, I would ask, is there any other board member who just is not comfortable with this project as currently presented, uh, potentially meeting the criteria in their minds for granting of a special permit? Because if they're not, then we, the rest of the discussion really can't proceed. So is there anyone other than Amy that potentially is not comfortable moving forward with these final details? Okay, hearing none, then I'm, I'm okay moving forward then. So January 27th, o and plan, drafting some conditions, review the relief that's gonna be required given the current set of plans that we have. Um, Anything else, board members? Do we want a construction schedule yet? Yeah, we usually get a draft of that. And the only sign is that address above the front entrance. Nothing, no monuments, nothing at the curb. No monuments on, okay. We've had some of those on properties. Okay, just the address up front, okay. And I would say maybe just any final thoughts on the lighting. I don't know if we have a lighting plan, right? I don't think, I don't believe we do have a lighting plan. Is it just? Uh, I'm not sure that we have the cuts for all the lighting. We'll, so make, sure we, we'll make sure we work with Mr. McBain on that. Okay. Make sure that, because uh, Jim's a stickler on the lighting, as I well, will, so. Yeah, I mean, front entrance for sure, but right, there's no light poles, there's no big, you know, parking lot kind of lighting needed and requested. Um, just whatever's on the building, in the balconies, in the garage, right? That's, a, you know, emergency lighting around the other back, the back and sides, right? There's any sort of emergency lighting on the building. Yeah. Might yeah. be some bollard lighting by the entranceway. I mean, there might might be yeah. some, because there, there, there is some parking. Yeah, so I talked to one other item that was that I think was of to refresh the board that was very important to the board and I think to some members of the public because I, I take my condition notes was the preservation of those trees on the on the right side of the building as you look at it. Um, so I talked to Jim Emanuel, the landscape architect, um, and he's going to put together a construction protection plan for those trees that we you know that we could either make a condition or part of the O and M plan. Didn't we determine that those aren't your trees? That's right. Um, aren't they on the other people's property? Yeah, but we want to we want to protect them. Oh, I, I and so do I want you yeah. to. But I I know when we were first talking. So, uh, Brian, I do think that there needs to be some communication with that group at some point to say, hey, you know, can we do this? Yeah. But, yep. But certainly a reasonable condition could be like you're going to work with the abutters. Yeah. And yeah, make yeah. every attempt to save them if anything can't be for one reason or another accident or natural causes that you replace them yeah and i'm yeah. sure the abutter would appreciate that yes my recommendation and i'll say it again keep the the old foundation on that side to retain the trees and because your building is not sitting on that old foundation it's fitting several feet away so you can keep that foundation as a retaining wall basically and and basically assist disturbing those trees not disturbing those trees Easy peasy. Yep. Okay. Anything else? 
Okay. Motion. Uh, public. Oh yeah, sorry. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> Um, we got, we got a, I got I got you a little of your usual got you ahead of you a little bit of your usual pace. Yeah. Sorry. All right, we'll open it up to the public. Uh, any comments, questions? Please raise your hand in the room, and I will call on you. I'm scrolling the list here, looking for hands. Okay, Susan Wetmore. Hello. Hi, Susan. If you can just um, state your name and name and address for the record, I know we've. Sure, Susan right Wetmore, um, Twelve Sunset Drive. I just yep. wanted to make a comment about uh, traffic, and I understand when, you, you know, when we see the traffic reports and the traffic um, studies, that they never, you know, the reality is usually not the same in my experience to the developments on Salem Street. Um, and when the, you know, the difference between a business or uh, a residence, you know, housing, either one is okay with me. Um, I know it's, there's building going to happen in those places. I know that some of those, the areas are not in great shape, so that's fine. And I appreciate when they, when you look at um, a project and try to make it look at the best it can. I understand that, but the traffic situation is something that doesn't go away. And there's a there's a different component when it's um, residents as than a business. And the one of the concerns that I have with getting out of my own neighborhood and all of these apartment buildings is that you know, obviously there's a lot of trips back and forth, which is, is their right. But the problem with traffic happens when you come out the one driveway they, they have and you can go either right or left. So that can really stop traffic. Um, that's our problem getting out of our neighborhood. And that's gonna be the problem that's gonna accentuate the problem for other people doing the same thing. Um, and it's just the unique, you know, when we when we talk about traffic, it's not like we don't want something to be there. But we have a neighborhood of 100 homes. And when they were built, they were supposed to be connected to at least two other streets so that there would be an exit out. And I'm sure you people know the, the whole story behind that as well as I do. Um, that wasn't done. And now it's it's at a situation those other streets have been built up so it can't be done. So we have no choice but to go in and out that area. So it's traffic and it's the safety of that. And I know you can't now change that we go out, you know, we have another exit out. So that's why personally I get concerned with all of the other stuff adding to the, the traffic, the ability to get in and out, the safety. So I just wanted to make that clear. I appreciate when you when you make buildings, when you pay attention to the detail, but um, the traffic and the reality and, and the amount, that's, you know, it, it is a concern to us. So I appreciate you listening. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Susan. Uh, is it Shayla, Lord? Sheila? You can unmute yourself or attempt to, I can. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, um, Sheila Lord, 20 Walton Street. I do have concerns about the traffic as well. When I just was listening to the, um, the traffic advisory board, when I asked them about, you know, the different projects on Salem Street that they were talking about, they made it sound like they only, when they do a study, they're only looking at one project at a time. They're not taking into consideration all of the projects that are being proposed right now. So I think that somebody has to look at that as, um, 
the the traffic in total of all of these three projects going in. I think I agree with Amy, enough is enough. I understand that this neighborhood is zoned for business and I get that anything new is gonna look better than the, you know, the buildings that are there now, but it is still, you know, there are still people living here. It is still a residential area. And I just think that so much is being jammed into this area. And it is a safety concern with traffic. And I think the studies that were done can't, they weren't done. They were done during COVID for one thing, and it's still COVID now. School is not in session. You know, the normal day-to-day -day traffic, people are working from home. It's not a normal traffic flow right now. So to, for somebody to say that a new building with, you know, 30 units isn't going to impact the traffic at all, or significantly, I just find that hard to believe. So that is, it, it's a big concern because it takes a long time sometimes to get out of this neighborhood to go either left or right. We're waiting at the top of Walton Street trying to turn out and we can't. So it is, it is a concern. The other thing is the building itself, it, to me, it still looks very commercial. I mean, the black at the top of it, it is, it just looks like a commercial building. And I get that, it, you know, what you're saying, it could be an office building, but it isn't. It's a residential building. And it, and somebody, one of the board members last time said it looked like an urgent care. And it, and it does. And I do appreciate that you're trying to make it look as decent as possible. Um, but I still have concerns about the way that it looks and the traffic in the area. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think when we had um, Lieutenant Anderson here last time, and we did receive a memo, I think they one of their memos to us accounted for all three of these projects in total. Um, I know we received at least one. The first one probably on its own, but where where this one and the other newer one uh, further down the road um, came to us relatively close to one another, I think they looked at all three. So they did look at all three, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, so I don't, it, it may have been, may not have been stated as such, or the meeting. I, I can't say what Ms. Ford, um, what meeting. Right. It was yes. He, he, he yeah. actually. I asked at the end of the meeting. I asked specifically about that, and he said because they never know when they do a study whether any one project is going to be approved or if it's going to move forward, so that it's difficult for them to do a study for all of the projects. So he made it very clear that when they did the study, it was not for all three projects. That's what he said. So I'm just, cause I asked, would, you know, would it be feasible to do a study including all three projects? And he said that it, it's really hard to do that because as he said, you ne they never know which, which projects are gonna move ahead would are going to be approved and go forward. Hmm. Lieutenant Anderson said that. Yes. Interesting. Because they okay. I, I'm... Yeah, Mr. Chair, the, the the study we got from five twenty five is what included all three of these projects. Correct. Yes. And, and also, that's the one where we went for about an hour and they discussed the formula that they did to uh, I don't know what, what you want to call it normalize for COVID. Um, yeah. That that is mandated by the state. So yeah. both of those were, were taken. In. All three projects were taken into account. And so was COVID. And then being, you know, engineers, I don't think we could just say, well, you know, better than you. Yeah. So I'm not sure why or what was said at that other meeting, Ms. Lloyd. I'm just, I'm just knowing what was presented to us, and it definitely did account for all three. So maybe, maybe it was a subsequent to that. I don't know. Um, okay. But I appreciate your feedback, and we understand. We get it, yes. and we're trying okay. to. Yeah, we're we're trying to do what we can in our charge and then rely on traffic folks to, to give us their expertise in those aspects. Um, thank you. They, they are the aspects in our in our peer review board. So, but thank you. Um, okay, was there anyone else? We'll go back to the participant list. Uh, RS. Yes, hi, okay. can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, Rick Stewart, uh, 157 Salem Street. Um, listen, I've lived on Salem Street for over 30 years, uh, and I have a little history up and down there. In fact, I used to live at 534 
Salem Street years ago. Montrose Ice Cream used to be there. Very, very different than today, obviously. The traffic is definitely a lot worse. And I get it every year, there's increase in traffic and all the rest of it. But over the years, you know, I've seen the traffic increase. I know when Linfield was putting in the new mall up there, there was big discussions about traffic. You drive up and down there. They were smart enough, or however they figured it out to have UPS turn into Wakefield instead of Linfield, because they recognize there's a traffic issue down there. And we can talk about this all day. You know, let's get beyond that. We all know there's a traffic issue down there. To me, one of the questions I have, and I was kind of listening to the discussion earlier about, we have a zone business area. We hired a person for economic development. In order to do that, they need places for businesses to come, because that's one of their main goals, is to bring businesses to Wakefield. We're taking the zone business area and we're converting it to residential. That makes that person's job quantitatively more difficult because the amount of area that we're going to have for business development will be consumed by residential. So if the idea, and it seems to be advocated by the board that in the business district, it is to the benefit of the town to bring in residential housing, reducing the opportunity for business development. Why do we have a business development person if the idea is we're just going to be continually bringing in more and more residential into the business area. I find that to be a conflict between the two aspirations the town's looking for. If we're looking to bring in business, we need places for those businesses to go. The opportunity, if there's land that can be developed and we can put in good business opportunities there, it would seem to make sense. And years ago in Salem Street, right up in that area, it started that way. When Montrose Ice Cream closed, they built that nice two-story office building across the street. They put the nice two-story office building behind the uh, Sunoco station. And even the three-story office building that's kind of next to the next development we're going to talk about. Granted, it's a little bit taller. It's set back decently. That's on the right track. It's a business area. It's being developed for business. It makes sense. But now we've sort of changed from that perspective. And now it seems to be the idea is we're going to take the business zone area and we're going to create more housing in there. And it's one thing to say, you know, we need to add some more housing to Wakefield. I get that. But we have a very small section of, of uh, area and it's zoned business. And we don't have one housing development. We don't have two housing. We don't have three. We don't have four. We don't have five. We're at six now in that very small area. And that's only going to open it up to the few parcels that are left there. They're going to say, why am I not doing this too? So is that entire strip of zone business going to be nothing more than one apartment or condo complex all the way up to the light. How does that balance with the business needs and our business economic development person to try and bring people to town where we're just consuming all the zone business area for more and more housing? I, I, I see there's a disconnect there between those two. The other piece of the issue is, and I talked about this last time, the scope of these projects, they're just too big. That's the problem that we're running into. The current one we're looking at, that top floor, in my personal opinion, if you remove that, I think that would make that building a lot more appealing. It would give better options. It would just be more in tune if we're going to have a building that's going to be residential. It just looks like it's dropped on top just for, again, to add more square footage for you know a better return on investment. The one we're going to talk about next, it's the same thing. We have two office buildings, and we're going to try and drop a residential building between it. It just, it, it just doesn't work. Either we're going to have business or we're going to have uh, residential, but to have a zone business area and be consuming it for just residential. And then what we're putting in there, its size and scope is larger because they're still looking for relief, whether it's for, you know, offsets or parking or whatever. It, it, we seem to be going down these roads where we're conflicting with two goals of the town, business development, and then trying to do something with housing. And in that one particular area, it's already too many developments to begin with. But now we seem to be talking about, well, we can even do more of it here because somehow this is what's the best thing to do in this area. Where does it end? At some point, does every single lot in that area get consumed? And then we move to the next business area and we move in there and we start doing the same thing. I just, there needs to be more balance. And I just don't see that happening here. So that's my kind of 30 plus years on Salem Street, what I've seen, what I see coming and I'm concerned about it because at the end of the day, Wakefield just shouldn't be at every place that you come into Wakefield, whether it's from Linfield on that side, or we're talking about coming from uh, Stoneham uh, down by the train tracks, or what's coming over at the head of the lake. I mean, the, the entry into Wakefield shouldn't be 
condoization or apartmentization. And that's all that we see as we come into town. Food for thought. That's my two cents. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I really wish you uh, would consider opening up your video so we could see you talk. But uh, I appreciate your uh, your comments, Rick. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Anyone else? Just scrolling the list one last time. Going once, going twice. All right, I see no other hands, so we'll close with the public testimony for the evening. Greg, did you have something else you wanted to add? Okay, your uh, audio. Nope. I'm, I'm, I'm back to working, I think. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. All right. All right, board members, That's anything else? I Go ahead. We continue this to our next meeting. January Second. 27th. Okay, that would be January 27th. Second. Thank you, Amy. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, board members, uh, Chip? Yes. Amy? Yes. Tim? Hi. Joe? Yep. Tom? Yes. Greg? Yes. Mike? Yes. Thank you, Mike. Okay. All right, this um, hearing is continued to January 27. Thank you uh, for the information tonight and the input. And we'll talk to you again in two weeks. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. And once again, Brian, if we can get hard copies in the building department for the updated plans, just I know they're not final, but at least I can stamp up. Yes. As we go along here and Gail will let me know when they're there. Thank you. Do we also want samples of materials brought there? Yep. Okay, material samples. Although I don't know how I'm going to get there to look at them. I was going to say Gimpy. What are you, you <laughs> want me to bring the wheelchair by? Or, uh... Right. I got a scooter. I hope there's no ice on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> can we do a drive by? Oh, Maybe we can, arrange a, we can arrange a drive by. A drive by? All right, good. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Miss, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. How do we, and, and this is not a question I want answered. It's just a something I always think about. How do we get people to understand that we're not the planning component, that we just have to look at what's being presented to us? I mean, I have this discussion in my own house ever, all the time, like, why didn't Trader Joe's go in rather than Shaw's? You know, it's like, we look at what's presented to us. We don't get to pick and choose what's presented to us. I, I don't know how we can get that word out to people or have them understand that we're not the planning component. I don't know. I, I have similar discussions. I, I get frustrated with because I want to listen to the public and I hear their concerns. I just sometimes think they, they think we can go, no, you can't do this apartment building because we, the town, are going to build an office building for people to come to. I just, it, it always kind of frustrates me a little bit. That's it. I hear, I hear you. So I'm, I'm sure we've all had similar discussions. And coincidentally, um, I've made the introduction of, of Aaron Kokinda, um, our new economic and business development director, who's in attendance this evening. Um, and hearing all of this, and I'm sure her ears are perking up, um, but it's probably part of her charge and others in the town. Um, it's a collective effort. I don't know that it's all necessarily falls on her new shoulders, um, but uh, yeah, I, I get it. All right, moving right along. The next continued hearing, case 21-22, 23, and 24, 168 Lexington Street, LLC at 525 and 527 Salem Street. Brian and team. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Peter, your, Peter Sandors is here tonight and also um, Bob Zareski, who is the uh, principal of the applicant entity is here, uh, the owner of the property. Um, and um, we do not have our site civil, Chris Barages. Uh, Chris unfortunately had a surgical procedure and he is laid up. Um, we, we've, there were some minor changes to his site plan, uh, which we, we might not even talk about, but we will be prepared to cover that if we need to. And um, 
John, I think, uh, I think, I'm sorry, uh, Peter, I should say, is going to be more the presenter because I think uh, to refresh the board's memory on this, um, it's more architectural issues, I think, on this building um, that the board wanted to see Peter uh, and um, Steve uh, take a look at um, and um, possibly make some um, alterations and additions of materials and changes in the front door. That was an issue that Amy had brought up uh, to commercial looking um, and also wanted to see some renderings of this building um, from different angles. So I've got to stop sharing this screen. Um, and let me try to get to. Okay. Peter, you there? I'm here. Great. You want to um, kind of take it from here, Pete, and talk to the board about what, what you've done? Sure. So, is this the right slide? Do you want, I can... No, we, we can work it from here. With This is a good slide to look at. And I like, I like that we, uh, this time, Steve inserted um, the existing conditions so we can see in the bottom right there how the, um, the site looks now with the two uh, homes, the way the trees are, the way um, the brick office building in the front sits. Um, last time, uh, my take and, and Brian, I believe too, was that the building sat very tight onto Salem street. It seemed very overpowering. Um, so we worked, um, with the building going through, um, and taking three feet out of that building from front to back. Now, again, we have to do that so that the units, the elevator, the hallways, everything still works, but we were, we were able to do it. Um, no, I, I misspoke. We took one foot out of the building front to back. The building, the building is very tight that way uh, in how it works. And we were able to take two feet out of the uh, parking um, lane uh, in the lot behind. But what the intent was is to peel, is to push the building three feet back onto the site and off of Salem Street, um, which we did do. Um, and additionally, uh, we were able to shift the building five feet uh, to the right. And that was because we took three feet out of the building left to right and an additional two feet out of the entry parking lane um, driveway uh, that goes into the site. So we're taking um, the mass of the building, reducing it, uh, and then we're taking the reduced building and pushing it back into the right uh, so that I, I felt it helped settle it back in there. Chris Farad just worked on the site plan uh, and then we came back and, and rendered accordingly. Additionally, up on the fourth floor, I was able to take four feet after all those reductions, then an additional four feet out of the fourth floor left to right and pull the whole fourth floor mass in on the building. Uh, so, so the building is substantially smaller uh, by square feet. Um, and um, in this rendering, you can see we've brought um, more of the brick into place. We've picked a brick now. Uh, we picked um, a concrete siding for the uh, fourth floor and we've picked our um, hardy plank siding as well. So we've picked some materials. I felt like this now shows the building setting in there uh, much better, uh, much more comfortably than it did before. Um, Brian, if you can go to the next slide. Here's the building coming in the other direction. Um, it, it, I think this one substantially shows how the fourth floor uh, really does set in. Uh, the only projection up there that cannot change is, is the stair tower that's happening about mid building. Um, this, this now is showing the updated materials on the bays, the use of uh, brick for two stories uh, on the front, uh, the updated um, front entry and also the building setting back um, three additional feet uh, on the site. Um, go ahead, Brian, to the, to the next slide, if you would. This, this was um, uh, an answer to rendering um, the elevations 
Um, so now you can see, if you look to the bottom left, Second Bay, you can see the, the more residential uh, front entry um, with uh, AZAC trim, double hung windows, um, still a glass entry, but again, much softer than it was before. So it looks less like, a, um, like an office building. Um, the, the bays being done in uh, MDO, um, the siding being used, the brick being used, it's concrete panels. Uh, up on the upper floor. Um, I think this shows less, the, the, it still allows for the four feet uh, coming in, but it just doesn't read as much, I think, because the stair towers are, are there in the flat. Um, go ahead to the next slide, Brian. Uh, this was a request, I think, uh, of yours, Amy, to render the building from the parking lot side. So you can see, um, again, that the materials are being carried over. It's not being forgotten when we get to the back. Um, you can see the, the entry here is similar to the front, but this is what um, the building would look like on the parking lot side. Um, go ahead to the next uh, slide, Brian. And this was our materials board where we're calling out um, the brick, um, the um, which is Cambridge brick veneer, hardy plank siding, which is pearl gray, uh, the concrete rain screen, which is up on the fourth floor. We did a blow up of the entry so that you can see the detail that we're providing uh, to make it more residential. Um, just wanna scoot up a little bit, Brian, so I can look, I can read the bottom part. Uh, there you go. The Anderson 100 series double hung windows um, with transoms in black. Uh, these are the light poles, which is a lighter layer fixture, I believe. Uh, black sconces on the building, the standing seam metal roof copper, which is going to happen on the bays. And I can't read the last piece because the photos are in the way. <laughs> um, I believe that's the bay material uh, called out on the last part. Uh, but this, this is to prevent that confusion between what the rendering colors are showing and what the actual um, materials are that we're hoping to use on the, uh, on the building. So, so our feeling here was that we were able to take the building, reduce the massing, and then uh, and, and the ultimate goal was to place the building in a better spot on the site. Uh, and, and I think ultimately get it to look um, more comfortable um, as you, when you're in the Salem Street. As long as we're on this slide, can I just ask, we're, we're seeing another dominance of gray and shades of gray. Yeah. Is any consideration given other colors? No. You know, on Foundry Street, we brought in a little green. On 175 North, we brought in some yellow. Just yeah. some other color besides gray. No. What? <laughs> no. It's classic. You put in these other colors, and then in five, 10 years, they're going to look very outdated. You're going to stick with classic colors so that they stay relevant. So, Mr. Chair, I can add, uh, um, I work with Phoenix, this is Steve. Um, I think the board last time had uh, concern that this building in 610 down the street were starting to clash with materials. There was starting to be a repeat between the siding color, the bays. So I think what we're doing in 610 is doing more what you talked about, the yellows and the greens, kind of bringing that with some different color and then this building coming back with the more gray tone to have that differential in between the buildings. And Amy, I think you're right. It's a very traditional way to, to do it. I mean, brick certainly is. I'm not going to argue with any amount of brick, you know, that, that's very classic and timeless. It just, okay, just my two cents. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, can I even back up a little bit from starting to talk about the colors. I think this photo and maybe even the first one, I think I'll use the same word that I used last time, is still shocking for me. You know, this, I don't know, this, even more so than some of the other projects seem to be slammed onto this site. You know, you're starting already with the bottom floor four feet above the sidewalk. And it's, you know, I think you said we moved it back a couple of feet. Uh, but when it's already, you yeah, know, three. starting at essentially chest to shoulder height for most people, moving a building that's already, you know, four stories back three feet doesn't really do much in my mind. This seems one that, 
you know, could call for lopping off an entire floor in my, in my mind, making that third floor like the fourth floor. This just seems way too kind of, you know, you're already starting at chest site. We're trying to we say, oh, we moved it back three feet because we don't want to lose parking. Well, the better answer to me seems to be reduce units so you can lose parking and move it back and make more green space out there. I should mention that we also took four feet out of the height of the building by reducing all the floors and reducing the top floor by a foot. So that's also a pretty major change in what was presented before. I don't know that the renderings really show that because they're a rendering, but it, it did. It is done. The building is four feet shorter. Yeah, I think. I mean, one of the things that really affects this, unfortunately, the site is you're starting already at kind of chest to head level as you're walking and driving by. So four feet for a building that's already on top of you. Yeah, maybe significant from a you know, real estate and architecture standpoint, but it's not really significant from a you know, regular person from the town walking by or driving by. I mean, I, I think it came into discussion before the, whether we should flip flop and put the parking forward in the building back, but I think from living in the building. I, I think that's getting even ahead though. I don't, I'm not even talking about flip flopping. I think this just could use for taking a lot more off the building, moving it back a little bit. Because if you you know taking if you take a lot off, you can lose some of the parking, moving it back a little bit. It just seems like we're you know I can't I, I had this same discussion last time with it. I think I used the same word shocking, and then being told oh we moved it back three feet and took it down a couple feet, you know, doesn't really change that. You know this was one to me that could use a drastic. Um, I won't say redesign because I do like the design elements of it, but a, 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 a real hard look at whether this is the right size for the site. I know we hear a lot about other people, from people about jamming other projects on, on the site tonight. I think we usually come to good, pretty good outcomes, but this seems to be, I mean, that picture especially, it basically looks like it's leaning out from the site, really lording over everything else that's well, I can say just as a comparison, uh, Greg, and for the board. So the project that was approved, the 581 had land area of 24,600 square feet and 21 units were allowed under the density. That's a 19 unit project. This lot is 28,500. So a couple more thousand square feet and it's proposing 24 will be allowed It's proposing 21 residential units. So, you know, as far as the density for the lot goes, it's, it's the one at 581 was actually more. I understand what you're saying, but uh, I think it's, it goes beyond just density. This is like, it's, I mean, look at it. It looks like it's literally jumping out of that site. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You're not talking units, you're talking the building. Yeah, the whole yeah. project. Yeah. I'm not talking density. I'm talking the, the actual project being put there. Is, is almost leaning off of that site. You know, feels like it's kind of crowding everything over you. And, and it doesn't help. I understand that it starts at four feet above the rest of the surrounding area. I believe it was four feet. It was something along that line. Some increase there. Yeah. Oh, just elevation difference? Yeah, yeah, from the sidewalk to essentially the walkway to the front door. If you're on the sidewalk, it, it was like, that's a hill so, right there. I believe they said it was essentially four feet. I think that's what Chris said last time, Chris Paradis. Well, we can get a clarification from him. Is, is there a way to eliminate that ele elevation change with either a stone wall in back or, or sink it or do, do something so that there isn't that four foot so that the, the we just grade it differently uh, and do some landscape features that, uh, you know, the parking may be up a little bit or something, but there, there's plenty of ways to bring buildings down. Peter, John. I, well, I'm, uh, Chip, I think back, back helps too. Like that's why I'm saying the reduction, they keep saying, oh, we can't do it back because of parking. But if we could lose parking spaces, hey, you know, if they can figure out, however they, I mean, I don't know if it's for us, 
So I know it's not for us to design it, but it just seems like from where it is on the lot and from essentially being four feet above, it's just, it's just uh, well, it, it's it's uh, what you're talking about, Greg, is in the character of the shape of the front of the building. Forget the top for the moment, but in the character of the shape of the building, basically, because of the undulation in it, which helps to sort of shrink it to some degree in character. But when you think when you look at the rest of the buildings that have been there since the 60s and 70s, they're just flat brick boxes, no character at all. So I hesitate to sort of think about, I understand what you're saying and about it projecting itself out on the street, but that's in the architectural character. To some degree, it's in the setting, but it's also in the architectural character. And I'd hate to dumb down the architectural character to, to come down to the level where in fact, we've just got these flat brick walls with no character. That's a, you know, it's kind of an ugly street to drive down. It's like driving through, driving through a warehouse district, you know? Just think about, off the office building parks you drive into basically they're just straight walls very efficient windows right out to the right out to the finished edges and the like that you know unless they're done really well they're boring i understand what he's saying but respectfully disagree that it's it, it is the building it's not the architecture that i like the architecture it's the building so i'm not going to beat a dead horse but it's it just seems like it's <laughs> And it's not the architecture. And that's what I said last time too. If we lose, yep. if we lose the, um, if we lose a few units up top, then we, maybe we don't need as much parking in the back, and it can get pushed back. I think the building looks beautiful, just not. It's too much for right there. If that was on that other lot, <laughs> it would be fine. But it's just, it's too much. Well, we'd like to try to find a way to make it work with the unit count, you know, you know, because that's not the issue, as Greg said, because, you know, we start chopping units, we, we chop affordables. That's the way the, the calculations go. If you lose two units, one of those is an affordable. And, you know, we'd like to try to, we'd like to try to make that work. Um, so um, that will be our goal. Can you remind me of the Parking count on this building? Um, I can. Um, hang on a second. Yeah, it'd be a good idea to look at the site plan to see what might be able to. I think we updated it last time because of the office and you did. And the bedrooms. I think it said we needed 33. So 21 units plus the office, 22. So one and a half is 33. Yep. So hold on, let me get the site right. plan up that Chris had sent, even though he's not here. This might be yeah. helpful to all of us. Hang on. Here we go. Um, let me see. Okay. Just bear with me. Here we go. Um, parking calculations. So 33 are required, we're providing 36. And there's obviously no other way to reconfigure that parking. Well, what he already did is, is uh, you can see here, Chris shrunk this aisle down to 22 mm -hmm. uh, to allow for the, for the building to be um, pushed back, it, you know, and it is, you know, the building itself is pretty, I mean, the front door is 22, 22.5 feet from the right of way. And we are beyond, this is Sam Sloan's building here to our left. Isn't that the Connor who's building, Brian? So we're- Yeah, yeah, we've, we've actually met with this. We, we've uh, corresponded with the Sloans who own this building. Um, and they are uh, supportive of the project. We talked about the distance between the buildings. They wanted to understand that. They, they know what else could go on this site, which they were not excited about, and they support the project. 
So um, they actually sent an email to me in that regard. They, they think that, um, um, you know, they, you know, you, you, you talk about offices in the building, you know, it, the interesting thing is the, the existing office buildings don't want more competitors for office. Um, you know, they, they like, they like the residential mix with them. Um, so, um, but, but this is a site plan. We do meet the parking. Well, board um, members, just with this up, if I may. So say we convinced them to take off the top story. That's four two bedroom units. That gets rid of ten, potentially six parking spaces. What six spaces allow them to move that building further back on the site? How would that work? Just looking well, at six it. plus four, because aren't they already four over what they need? Yeah, well, we like people to be over what they need, don't don't we? Aren't three we over the people to have more parking, especially along this area. Yeah, I'm saying required parking. They would they would be able to we would be able to, you know, say you you, you could get by with four six fewer ones with four units gone. I mean, yeah, if that whole row of 10 in the back of the building could be eliminated, then the whole building could go back and you just have wraparound parking. But to do that, you know, there'd be a significant reduction in units, right? Not just the top floor, but several others. No, I mean, I mean it, it, this it, building it, would have to get significantly smaller for that to happen, for, for it to have a meaningful impact on the parking such that the building could move further back. Was it okay, but they're the ones who are bringing up that they can't move it back because they're because of parking. Find another way then. Hmm. It, it, I mean, it's not. I was. I'm not trying to just reduce. It's not my suggestion. I'm a lawyer, not an engineer. I understand that. Hmm. Um, okay, bones. But they're the ones who said, you know, we can't move it because of parking. I mean, and and I, I mean, in first off, I, you can move it a few feet if you take out. Uh, I'm circling my cursor like you guys can see it. Um, you know, these final six spots, you can move it in the, I guess, the upper left. Right here, Greg. Those out, move it back a few feet. Right here, Greg. That, yeah, that's off the top of my head. I mean, I'm, so anything helps at this point, right? Yeah, and again, we don't want to spend the time here designing yeah. it. I'm just, you know, just trying to, it sounds like the, the feedback we're giving them is the building needs to be smaller and for it to be smaller, it has to be small enough that to make a meaningful impact. And I would just be clear that some of us are giving them that feedback. Yep. That, Was that, it contemplated uh, at I'm all? I'm fine with the size of the building, Mr. Chairman. I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a, I would like to see it lower to the street and I think that could be discussed. Yeah, which may help. 21 yeah. units doesn't bother me in this location. I was going to ask it. I mean, we're talking a little out of school because we don't have Chris Farages, but let's just assume we can take the building down to four feet so it comes to, to sidewalk level. And, and we can do, as Amy suggested, we can do some with a retaining wall in the back to, to make up the difference. Assuming that can happen, I guess I'd ask you, Greg, do you feel like it would it would sit on the site better? I think it would help quite a bit. Um, okay. To be clear, Chip, I'm not talking about number of units. That, that wasn't even my, when I, we spoke to the last meeting, I, don't, I think that was one scenario we discussed, but that's where everyone immediately went was, oh, we have to reduce the building size, we have to reduce the building space. Well, I mean, I, I think if you say take away parking spaces, you can Again, they say, that up. take away parking spaces, but the only way to do that is to reduce the numbers. But again, they brought that up. I All I started with was this building seems like it's jumping out from the site onto you. So can we do anything with it? Oh, we can move it back. To move it back, we have to lose parking spaces. So, so all these jumps, you know, there's got to be a creative way. And may, we didn't even talk about taking it down the four feet last meeting. And maybe that's, you know, uh, a way to get there and again like you said it is only a few people so if this is no there may be others but i i just don't i i get concerned when mm -hmm. we lump everybody together mm -hmm. we're not we just we have to feel comfortable moving past you know this is our second or third hearing on this so we just have to right we either have to again tell them to go do a whole new redesign and i hear Greg's comment that it's kind of leaning out over the street. I, I kind of agree with that too. And certainly the elevation shows it that way. 
And I think some of that feel is because it's four feet above street level and has a, has a prominent front. For one that has a prominent front as well, I understand that. Was it contemplated, Brian, at all to have any type of um, retail or anything in the bottom? Well, uh, we have that one office, Amy, if you remember. But I mean, something across where Greg's saying, like, where you're kind of looking into the whole front of it. I'm just wondering, like, restaurant or something like that, where it's also going to be a beneficial aspect to the town. Um, and then it kind of takes away that looking into somebody's apartment. Let me get to that elevation, Amy, so you can. Because isn't the apartment just a small little thing on the corner? Yeah, it's one unit. It's one yeah. Unit. This is the front elevation, right, Pete? Yeah. 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 Well, the, 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 problem, the problem you have with, with, you know, putting that type of use in here, then you get into a total different animal on the parking, parking. requirements because, you know, the, the problem um, that's been noted before, um, we need to, you know, I think we need to meet the parking requirements here, not only to comply with zoning and to comply with the neighborhood concerns on overflow parking, um, but for the rentability of this building, um, and the other thing too, you know, for the affordable housing components, actually 610 and 525 work very well together because 6, 610 is going to be a condominium building for sale and 525 is a rental building. Um, so, you know, it really gets two different elements of the need for the affordable housing. Um, but the point is, it was mentioned, I got off track there for a second. Um, the, um, there's no room for overflow parking here. So, you know, like when, you know, for example, on, you know, 175 North Ave, you know, there was, there was room for some variation on the parking because you had all the parking across the street for the, you know, at night for the restaurant, but there's, there's really off site, there's nowhere for anybody to go here. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, the other thing too is, you know, that stuff's all going to come back, but, but right now, you know, with COVID um, and we don't know how long the effect is going to be. You know, unfortunately, there's not a lot of restaurants that are looking to open up right now. Okay. Sadly. Greg? Yes. Um, when you look at that rendering looking down the street, that new one, um, if, the, if the upper floor was pushed back more, do you think that would be less, seem like it's less uh, projecting onto the street? So I almost think it'd be more like what we did with Tarrant Lane where we stepped the second to top floor back because the top floor is already you know, back. Greg, which rendering do you want up? This one or the that, first yeah, one? sure, or whatever Jim was referring to. Is it, no, the, is, the render is before that. that. That's the this is the one to me that, that looks one. like it's falling out onto the street. All right. So so what happens if we ask them to look at pushing that back so that instead of it setting back on this on the highway side, it's flush on the highway side, thus pushing it further back off the off the main street. Yeah, that certainly could work. I think one one thing what I was talking about, Tarrant, if you remember Tarrant Lane, we did almost like a two step. Then it would, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, this building may be way too small for that to even be. Uh, I don't even start that type of project, but. Yeah, I think that has too much implication in the rest of the layout, basically, because I was the other thing. The other thing I was just looking at is there's a possibility, I suppose. For a few more parking spaces, one, two, three, maybe three or four near the front of the building, just at the entry, because it seems to be a fairly uh, wide pass of part of uh, landscape er there area there. But even if you took those out of the mm -hmm. back of the site, there's still not enough to to make a difference to push the building back further. And then there's. Then there's the question if you build a building a little bit long, wider on the street, making one of the units a little bit larger, um, 
you know, what, does that work? Well, it really doesn't when you look at the plan of the layout for the units. So you, you see in, in the front there where the where at the where you go through the main street, where you hit Main Street basically, or Salem Street, should I say, there's there's possibly some parking spaces in there, maybe, but it, not by much. In in, the, in this area, Jim? Yeah, yeah. It may mean the building has to move a little bit to the left or rotate a bit or something. Yeah, I, I think we've given a lot of feedback at this point. So maybe it's time to just let them go back, meld the comments and see what they can come up with. But I think they're hearing that it needs to be significant as to Greg's and Amy's comment, not just two feet here, one feet here. There's gotta be a definite different feel. From the street perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Greg, I told yes. you. Yeah. Yes. From the street yep. perspective. Okay. I do you think, uh, yeah. Peter, do you have any um, any initial thoughts on the possibility of moving that top story back? So there, there definitely is uh, the ability on the top story um, where the bedrooms project um, to peel them in a little bit. I don't know visually if that's going to show in our rendering, but there, there's definitely the ability and. To Greg's point, the, the center component of the building, we can look at it here. So we see the walkway come into the entry here, center rectangle. There's a possibility there to pull several, pull that in several feet. Not as I'm not as convinced yet that I can do it on the right and left corners, but I definitely can do it in that center. I, I was looking at it while, while you were all this. Okay. Um, so the those first three floors of units can push in how about peter? the top floor peter is that how far is that from the how, how's that work up top with jim and see if I can. moving moving it back let me see if i can answer that um so i would say on the top floor um there's a possibility to take maybe definitely a foot but definitely possibly two feet peter your problem's going to be the elevator, you might end up having to put the elevator on the other side of the corridor all the way up through the building so it gives you a little more latitude. Yeah, yeah. But if we hold if we hold the rear components of the building as we have, maybe we can do these adjustments in the front. So everything forward of the of the center corridor. Seems like we could. Um, okay. Well, I got it. And maybe maybe that in, with working with getting the building lower, so getting the building lower and pushing the front facade in. Exactly. Plus, we really are held on the right and the left by the plan because of setback from parking, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And then we can talk to Chris to see what he can do on the on the uh, topography. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair, if I could ask you if we could possibly, uh, if Peter could correspond with Mr. McBain. Well, it helps because. <laughs> when are you guys going to start paying him? We'll pay him. No, <laughs> we'll give him lunch. No, we don't want to go there. We don't want to go there. That's right. Yeah. Uh, to recuse himself. Right. No, Jim, if, if you're okay, again, working offline, if there's anyone yeah. else. Again. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like he's got the time. Model ship building will be put on hold. Yeah. yeah. I've got four right. now. There's too the four is too many already. All right. So Brian, what else were you planning to cover tonight? It sounds like we, we that was it. Um, because that was a big that's the big thing. I think that's the hurdle that um we we need we the applicant needs to um focus on before they go further on anything else. Okay, I'm just looking at my notes and that's kind of what we uh, intended to cover tonight. So, all right. Um, if nothing else, board members, we'll open it up to public testimony. If any member of the public wishes to ask a question. Mr. Mr. Can Chairman, can we keep public testimony to architecture since that's all we covered tonight, not get into traffic and everything else? Yes, we can. 
Okay. So if any member of the public wishes to ask a question, make a comment about what we've heard tonight for testimony on this project, uh, we would welcome that at this time. Please raise your hand in the Zoom meeting and I will call on you. Susan Whitmore, please go ahead. Hi, Susan Whitmore, 12 cents at drive. I just want to say that I totally agree with the with the comments about it being too close to the sidewalk and being very shocking or imposing. So I do appreciate you, um, you know, considering and, and talking about uh, some re remediation to that. Um, the, and I don't know, I, these are still all two bedroom apartments. Is that correct? There's a mixture. I think there's a mix. I think there's one one, right? It's mostly two, right, Brian? I think. I think there's one office and the rest, all the apartments are two, or am I incorrect about that? One office, one one bedroom and 22 bedroom. 22 bedroom, okay. Well, so my comment in a, you know, traffic's another day, but um, with 22 bedroom apartments, I know that by, you know, you only need 33 spaces. I just feel like there's still going to be it's with two bedroom apartments in this area, not really walkable to anything that, you know, there's going to be two cars in each. So I still am concerned about the amount of overflow um, because of the two bedroom situation. But I appreciate the, the change or the look to change um, the footprint or whatever you want to call that. So thank you. Thank you, Susan. Anyone else? Scrolling the list here. Going once, going twice, seeing no other hands. We'll close with the public testimony for the evening. Again, there'll be other opportunities at future meetings when we get into other aspects of the project. I move that we continue this to January 27th. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Chip? Aye. Amy? Aye. Joe? Aye. Greg? Aye. Jim? Aye. Mike? Aye. Tom? Aye. Thank you. Unanimous. All right. Thanks again for the info tonight and the updates, and we look forward to meeting with you again in two weeks. Thank you very much. Have Thank a good night. Thank you. How you doing, Aim? Mm, all right. Hanging in. Trying. All right. Is it showing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. We're now moving on to new hearings for the evening. Uh, we have three. 21-28, Town of Wakefield, Albion Cultural Exchange at 9 and 11 Albion Street. <laughs> Who is here representing this application? Uh, my name is Chris Carino. I'm here, uh, the chairperson of the Albion Cultural Exchange Committee, here to uh, represent our sign request. Okay, thank you, Chris. Welcome. Yep, 18 Central Street. I think you want to address this. Thank you. Okay. So the floor is yours. Do you have, um, um, this is for bracket signs. So do you have a, a plan or something you can share just so folks can visualize it? Okay, um, I was under the impression that all that information was in your packet or delivered to your committee. No, it, it was, but we always like the applicants to share because we, uh, we have because we have public. Yep. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can quickly find a copy of it. Gail, yeah, that'd be that'd be great. I just was wasn't aware that I was to have that prepared for y'all. But I can give you a, a quick overview um, while you're looking for it. Go ahead, Chris. So my name is uh, Chris Carino. I'm the chairperson of the Albion Cultural Exchange Committee. <laughs> We're currently running uh, the 9-11 Albion Street building. And uh, our mission of our committee is to promote art, culture, and community. And we're converting uh, a 1910 post office uh, into our sort of uh, art incubation space, slowly but surely as we get funding. 
And we're at the point now uh, where we're ready for some signage. We've been in existence for about six years, maybe going on seven. And we have a lot of trouble giving people directions to our building because we don't have any signage uh, currently on the building or really anything that indicates our name. About uh, in the summer of 2019, we uh, established a new logo and we've been living with it for a while. And then uh, we got to the point where we had the funding and uh, the timing seemed right to put on a, uh, put on a sign. And uh, we consulted with uh, Bob Sardella of Sardella Signs, as well as uh, Jim McBain of the Design Review Board or Design Review Committee about what would be appropriate and we've gone through several iterations and solicited feedback in many different forums, uh, including the town council, uh, the design review board, uh, our, our committee, some other places. And we really think that we've come up with a design that uh, is in scale with the building and would look appropriate. We went through a few design iterations that we didn't think were right. And through the help of Mr. McBain and Mr. Sardella, uh, we have come up with something that we think you'll all appreciate. And uh, I'm here to answer any questions on that. Uh, moving forward, we uh, we seek your uh, approval to uh, be able to install this sign. And like I said, we think it's in 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 uh, character with the neighborhood, and will benefit uh, downtown in a positive way. Stay, Dave, you, stay on that. Stay on that one, Dave. Yeah, and you just okay. So um, on the fourth of November, basically, the Design Review Board met and discussed this this project basically. Obviously, there's no real sign band on this building except that the cast one that's really at the roof line. And it's a very narrow street, obviously. So their request to have a, a large bracket sign instead of a horizontal wall sign anywhere on the building seems most appropriate and most attractive to this and appropriate to the building. Um, so besides the fact that this is not the nine square foot sign that normally is allowed, this is a 13.5 sign, basically 13.5 square feet worth of sign, basically. It's proportionally correct to the building. It makes a lot of sense for this building. It will be, as they propose, lit at night as well. Um, it's also, because of the character of the architecture of the building, it's higher than allowed. Uh, normally, a sign like this wouldn't be allowed any more than 14 feet in the air. This is 17 foot 3 inches in the air, but it's the appropriate location to mount this and is on a nice decorative bracket sign at the same time. So there's two um, two things here that the that this group needs basically is to allow a larger sign and allow a higher sign, and because it's a bracket sign, basically it comes under special permit. So the board is recommending the design that's in this package to go forward for these people, basically. It's appropriate to the building, it's appropriate to the location, and appropriate because of the location it's in at the same time. So we're recommending approval of the sign. Okay, thanks, Jim. Okay, any comments or questions from board members? Other board members? I just wanna scroll up and look at the sign detail. That's the looking at it straight on. But the height seems right because it's above that mm. half, half moon window there. You'd have to put it right in that white area above the door and that's probably even too low. But so that seems appropriate. Go to the first, go to the first one, Dave. It shows the whole sign. Are the, are the lights specced on this in these? The lights are specced right there. So we're okay with yes. that, that style. Yes. And are the Kelvin, are the Kelvin noted, noted on it? It's a, it's a similar one that we approved um, use of um, on the um, basement storage space uh, bracket sign that uh, uh, where the old CBS was. Yeah, no, I don't see the Kelvin noted. It just says LED indirect lighting. Uh, we would just want to see that. Or note that, uh, Chris, just we look for a temperature range on the lights. You know, with LED, they can be soft or, you know, blue or bright. And we're looking for soft. Like 27 to 3300 Kelvin range. That's that softer range. Okay. Um, I believe we, we did have discussions on this. I don't know if it's in 
this packet or which form it form it's on, but we're we're happy to go with the recommendation of the board. Okay. Yeah, it's not I'm showing the packet that came from the design review board. Um, but I don't see it on this slide. This would be the best place for it, but it's not here. Could be noted as part of the special permit as a condition. Um, That's fine. Okay. Any other comments, questions, board members? I like the um, the top of it, how it mirrors the the windows of the building. It looks nice. Are the um, the letters that are on there, those are going to be raised? Slightly, yes. Okay. The, the smaller letters to where ideas happen, or is that on the... Uh, that's a question I'd have to ask Bob. I believe they're raised up just a, a smidgen. Okay. They, they look like they, they are by the cross section. It's to the left of it. Yeah. Okay. And to, yeah, your, to your note on the, the design of the logo, that was like a four or five month process. <laughs> where we really went through and anybody who's been involved in the logo design, we went through like 300 different versions. And mm -hmm. the, uh, the archway was considered important as well as the keystone on the top of it. And so we wanted to keep that all, you know, all in line with, with what we were doing. We had a bunch of other options, but this one seemed to make the most sense. Everybody really appreciates uh, the windows and, and, and just the building in general. We're really fortunate to really have access to this. There's a lot of people doing what we're doing that couldn't even imagine getting to where we're at, uh, at tonight. So we're very fortunate for our building and we think that our logo uh, pays tribute to, uh, you know, the architecture. Yeah, I think you guys did a nice job. Thank you. You're welcome. Dave, if you go to the last page, there is some sort of spec on the light. I can't really read it in the uh, printout. Hopefully it's more clear. I'm not sure that's the, oh yeah, okay. That's the light, I, like you said, I don't know that the Calvin is noted. Uh, it's blurry. I'm just looking for temperature or color. Yeah, it's blurry. It says 300K or 600K. Oh, that's when ordering it says. Um, yeah, it doesn't look it. Can you zoom in? Well, it's blurry already. I can't see it, yeah. Oh, it does it say watts. Yeah, it says when ordering, please specify color 30K or 60K. So you'd want the 30K. Okay. No, that's the color of the that's the color of the fixture. Is oh. that oh no, it oh. says color temperature. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll condition it just to be clear. I mean, I don't think it I think we're okay with the light and the sign and the bracket. Yeah. And, you know, it's just it's all right. We got to. It, part of this is a special permit. We can put a condition on it and just note the, yeah. the desired temperature range. And uh, okay. Um, well, 30K is between 2,700 and 33. <laughs> so, right in the middle, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, as far as correspondence, we did receive a letter from the uh, fire department. Um, no objections to the project. So, just for the record, there. Um, Okay, anyone else? Uh, yeah, I'm assuming the lights will shut off at like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, or is it time? We haven't specified it, but we're more than happy to. Yep, we definitely. Uh, yeah. Good point. So, conditions, during the temperature. I am not particularly swayed by either. 3300K. Um, so, What's, what's reasonable, Chris, what do you think? Normally, like with businesses, we're half an hour after closing to opening, you know, before opening, if these different businesses are closed at nine at night, open at, you know, seven in the morning kind of thing. So we'll, we'll look for the light. 11 o'clock was, was stated out loud. I think that's completely fair. We have some events that go late, uh, but we're, you know, we're happy to conform to what the board thinks. But if we could go with 11 o'clock, that'd be great. I think where they're located, 11 would be fine. Yeah. Okay, lights off by 11, okay. And if event does run later, it's fine. It's just, yeah, nobody's it's just the, idea, the idea is that they're not left on all night, that's all. Absolutely. Okay. Anything else, board members?
All right, Jim, are you going to re uh, recuse yourself on this one? I think it's typical because you've provided yep. input to the design yep. review board. I will. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, tap Tom on this one. Um, all right, before we go there, because it sounds like we're probably done with comments. Um, if any member of the public wishes to ask a question or make a comment, please raise your hand in the Zoom meeting and I will call on you. Not seeing any hands, we'll close with the public testimony. So we need- Mr. Chairman, I move that we grant a special permit for the sign for the uh, cultural group uh, <laughs> as presented to as presented to us by Sardella sign on the plan stated 10 30 2020 um, with two conditions uh, one well one would that we allow the sign to be 13.5 square feet as compared to the nine and we allow to hang it uh, at 17 feet as compared to what's allowed in the district 17 uh, three 17 three yep Okay, As opposed with, two, to with, with two conditions. One is that the lights will turn off by 11 o'clock at the latest. Uh, and two, that the wattage of the lights will be between 2,700 and 3,300 K. Okay. That's your motion? I'm pretty sure, yes. <laughs> Second. Okay, discussion? So Jim, just to be clear, they've applied for a special permit and the relief, the additional relief can be granted under that one special permit in addition to, as part of granting the special permit, right? Yeah, you've got to grant, you're granting a special permit to have one, a bracket sign, all right? Yeah. Two, you're granting, you're granting a larger sign than, than is needed, is required under 190-100D2B. Yeah, to go to three hundred to go to to go to three thirteen and a half square feet, and then finally, basically, you're granting a higher elevation for the top of the sign. They wanted to take the building. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just making sure we didn't need a separate variance kind of vote, separate from no, the special permit. No, we'd usually lump signing all together. Okay. They need. I just want to double check, and I'm going to continue to try to mute whoever keeps coming off mute. Whoever C H Y M is. C H Y M, please stay off me, stay on mute. <laughs> Disrupting the meeting. Thank you. Okay, I, that's all. I just wanted to be clear before we proceeded with a vote yeah. that we were good. Okay. Um, any other discussion? All right. All voting members. Chip. Yes. Amy. Yes. Joe. Yes. Tom. Yes. And I vote yes. So that's unanimous. Um, so Chris, you have your special permit. Uh, we just need to file a decision. Again, I don't know if you're familiar with the process. Um, I can work with you offline as the applicant and the representative. We'll draft a, a decision, get it filed. Once it's filed, there's an appeal period, 20-day um, appeal period. Once that's over with, then you can apply for a special um, um, a building permit to proceed and get the sign. Okay? Fantastic. So, appreciate your time. Okay. I'll work with you. Thank you. Gail. Good luck, Chris. I'll work yeah. with Chris through Gail, yeah. and we'll, we'll be in touch. All right? Thank you. All right. I appreciate it. Yep. Have a good night. Thank you. Moving right along, next on the agenda, 21-29, 30, and 31, three separate applications for M Bar Wakefield LLC at 500 so Main Street. Pointing that the way up. At this moment, the entire city is under an emergency declaration. Americans are being told for their sake. <laughs> okay. Okay. You ready, Mr. Chair? I am. I'm just contemplating my options with the person who keeps coming off mute and disrupting our meeting. Um, like, I think I can send him to timeout. Um, okay. Yes, Brian, please, please. Uh, right. the, floor, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, members of the board, for the record, Attorney Brian McGrail representing MBAR uh, Wakefield LLC, uh, who is, which is the owner of property uh, known and numbered as 500 Main Street. 
Um, with me tonight on behalf of the applicant is uh, Robert Santanelli. Um, Bob, are you here? I know he is, I saw him. It's like Hollywood Squares um, looking for Bob. Oh, there he is. Okay. He's there. Great, hey, Bob. Uh, the board is familiar with Bob. Bob owns a lot of property in the downtown area of Wakefield, um, and he's very vested in downtown and has been a great uh, corporate citizen. Uh, Bob has purchased the property at 500 Main Street, which is um, across from pretty much across from the middle school um, ball fields. Um, it's the old Napa site, um, and it was uh, auto. Uh, leasing and used car sales there, and then in the back of the building was an auto repair. So it's kind of a it's kind of a mishmash uh, that was going on on that site for years. Um, and I think it's a good thing for the town that Bob has purchased the land. He actually owns it at this point, um, and he's looking to redevelop it uh, for commercial purposes, um, which we'll get into the detail of. Um, also uh, with us tonight is Tom Chiyunda. Uh Tom, are you here? I'm here, Brian. Great, thank you. Good Tom, evening. Tom is our architect. And uh, Scott Thornton is here, who is our traffic uh, consultant. Um, we just wanted to have uh, Scott available in case any uh, questions came up. Uh, we've submitted our um, traffic report to your board and also it's gone to traffic advisory. Um, and we're waiting to get a meeting scheduled with them. Lieutenant Anderson said he's gonna get that scheduled uh, as soon as he can but we thought it would be good to have Scott here um, anyways uh, at this point. Um, so with that said, let me, um, if I may, bring up some plans. Hey, Brian, can you hear me? I can, Bob. Yeah, I just want to say uh, good evening to everybody. I know it's kind of late, but I want to thank the board and the board members for the uh, opportunity to present our plans for uh, 500 Main Street. It's a redevelopment of basically a vacant commercial building. As Brian said, I won't repeat it all, but a bunch of uh, automotive uh, properties that's been vacant for two years. And uh, the other one portion of it was a used car sale dealership. So we intend to demolish the existing vacant building and construct a, an attractive uh, standalone single story, uh, 2,500 square foot branch building for Bank Santander. And the bank intends to provide their customer services through indoor tellers and one single lane outside ATM. So that's it in a nutshell. I don't want to take too much time. It's pretty late. If any general questions I can answer now or just let Brian go on with the slides. Thank you, Bob. Welcome. Yeah, we'll let Brian or whoever's going to speak to the slides and sure. we'll Thank see you, where the Bob. discussion Perfect. goes from there. Yep. Perfect. Um, let me shrink this down a little bit. Okay. So this is to, to familiarize the board. This is, I'm going to, with my cursor, this is the 500 Main Street was originally comprised of all of this property going all the way down to Richardson Street um, and running along the old railroad tracks where hopefully someday we're going to have a, a rail to trail out back. Um, and this is, this is really the existing conditions plan. There was a lot of used car sales going on in this part of the lot. This was the big Napa building up front for the auto parts. And then there was auto repair uh, that was taking place in, in this part of the building. Um, is going to be to be completely raise uh, everything that is on the lot. And what we've had an op opportunity to do, we've already gone before the planning board. Uh, the lot has been subdivided. So now there are two lots. Um, there's lot one over here, and you can see the old, how the old building fit in to be removed. Lot two over here, um, and they both meet all of the requirements of the business zoning district, frontage area, et cetera. Um, and what we're proposing, where our development is going to be, it is going to be on lot two. Uh, for the bank that uh, Santander's branch bank, which Bob talked about that we're proposing. Um, lot one is going to be developed time. Um, Bob is currently, um, it's anticipated that that will also be a commercial type retail food, right, Bob? Um, you want to make sure mercantile something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but Bob, uh, as you know, Bob, uh, well, he's very um, particular about 
um, who, you know, he wants to do a build to suit here. So he just doesn't want to build something and then try to rent it. He wants to find a good user for him uh, in the town and, and make sure that they fit in. So this lot will be kept vacant uh, initially and later, later developed separately. Um, what we're proposing, as Bob had mentioned, is a 2,500 uh, one-story um, Santander branch um, that um, we think will fit very well into the site. Um, it will have an entrance only from Richardson Street, no exit, um, but it can have uh, entrance and exit from Main Street. Um, there's a drive up being proposed. That's why one of the special permit requests that we have um, and the drive up is not for a um, teller. It is for an ATM machine that will be connected to the building, but you can see you can drive around. Um, what we're proposing is to, we have also have another special permit to allow uh, parking on another lot because we want to put uh, encroach our parking spaces on the other lot. Uh, it's Bob in anticipation that um, the the eventual size of the development uh, that he will propose here will it won't be affected by this encroachment of the parking spaces. Um, and you know, quite frankly, we're doing that at our, at our own peril, but we think it works for the bank and it works for the lot at this point. And then we will just have to design around it um, when we um, go to develop uh, the lot next door. Ryan? Yes, Bob. Yeah, they might be interested to know that uh, we've executed declaration of reciprocal easement agreement with covenants, conditions, and restrictions, restrictions, 13 pages, so that either, um, either tenant on either property can use the other facility, basically, plus the other property. Mm -hmm. Uh, certain spaces we assign to the bank, and they may also park in the other site once it's later developed, and vice versa. Yeah, we would have, we would do a modification of this permit to the extent necessary when that when when we go to deal with this lot. So that's fine. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is this really just you know shows a proposed uh, building in more detail. It, it deals with the drainage aspect of it. We got a memo from the Department of Public Works today. I've sent that off to Paul and our site civil engineer to review, Paul Finocchio, who's a, a, a surveyor. So obviously we, we don't have comment on that point, on, on, that, um, on that memo at this point, but uh, we will, and you, as usual, I'm sure we'll address uh, the matters that were laid out in that memo. Yeah, we got it today too, and there's 20 odd points in there. So yeah, we'll be looking for some feedback. Yep, thank you. Okay. Uh, this is just more construction detail and the drainage stuff that um, Attorney McGreal does not fully understand, so he will not get into it all. Uh, <laughs> I'll leave that to the to the engineers. So, so that's the site. Um, I'm happy to move on to the um, to the uh, architectural, unless the board members want me to stay here, Mr. Chair. Before I do that, I, well, again, uh, this, um, sorry, go, go ahead, Amy. I was just going to preface it with this is our your initial presentation. There'll be other meetings most certainly on this project. So um, this is good for an overview. Let's take some initial comments and then move on to architectural. And okay. So please um, go ahead. Yeah. One just quick thing that I'm noticing, the when the cars are queuing in from Richardson, how it's a little tight there. Um, my one suggestion, having worked in a bank and knowing that the, um, the lines for, even if it's just an ATM can get long sometimes especially a bigger bank like this is putting it on the outside of that um i don't know what's there it looks like the median or something right there is having the atm on that side and having the lines the people that are going to go to the atm go on the right side and the left side be the side that goes is for traffic i know it makes it harder to manage the atm that way but i think just as a, a flow especially when there's um, school getting out, that area gets really busy. Um, I just don't know if that would make more sense to switch it over to that side. I will, we'll, we'll talk to Santander. I know that um, it's somewhat critical, I think, to have that ATM connected to the building for security purposes. Um, you know, because that's what yeah, it's going to come down. Brian, pardon what, me. Bob? I'm asking if Scott Thornton is still on from Vanessa. He is. Yep. Scott, are you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here, uh, Brian and Bob. And uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, I, it may be more of an of a operations issue with the bank as to where the, the teller machine is located. 
but uh, but I think it's it is something that that we can uh, take a look at. I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. sure that the the you know it the, there may be some additional spacing requirements for the ATM machine if it's if it's located further from the building. So it's mm -hmm. something that we have to look at. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not ideal to have to go out and service it every day when it's right. out there, especially when it's cold. But just thinking, you know, I, that's where I pack when I pick my daughter up every day and I know how crazy it gets over in that area. So for a safety standard a standpoint. Okay. All right. Brian, Brian, so yes, why didn't you, instead of drawing a straight line between the two properties, why didn't you you know, take a jig in the line basically to include the parking in one site as opposed to writing up some sort of share agreement. Well, I mean, I we don't forget, Bob. Bob. I mean, I uh, yeah. we did have an initial plan and it had a jig in it and it just didn't look right. Jim. Uh, yeah, and the uh, good thing, Jim, is, you it, know, it makes more sense to come right down the middle and we've already done the reciprocal agreement, 13 page agreement that just. Uh, makes it, in essence, for usable purposes, one site. And and the straight line, you know, is really not consequential, except that it makes it an equal, you know, quarter acre each, a little over quarter an acre. Well, it, it just it just looks like, you know, okay, I, I bought this site, I divided it in half, and then I've come up with a client that needs more than more than half. Yep. And so I'm going to, I'm going to basically stick my nose over to the next guy's property, but I'm going to have an agreement where in fact I can utilize that space. Well, we looked at a zig before. Uh, we wanted, we didn't want the zig going down the middle of the driveway entrance, and uh, and then to make it somewhat equal, it just moved to the left and went straight, um, straight east. Yeah, and don't forget, you know, the the luxury that we have is it's not an agreement with the other owner. Bob owns the other; he owns the other lot. Yeah, but who knows? Who knows what history brings to us? Well, but that's why, you know, what I'm saying is, once we figure out what's going to happen here, this might change a little bit. That you know, we can always change that line. We allow it. Yep. As he said, Jim, it's at their peril. So, yeah. and it's not no, it's before not. this, and it's not before this board. It's at their peril. Yeah. Just Rails. Try to understand the agreement a little bit. Is it filed with the deed? Is that something that would run with the land? I couldn't quite hear the question. Is the just try to understand that agreement a little bit to understand even how this parking works. Is that agreement filed? Does that with the deed? Does that run with the land at all? Or like, is it is it assignable? How does that work if one of these two lots is sold? Uh, if the lots are sold, the agreement stays in place. The separate easement. Oh, it's an easement. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's we were just saying mutual agreement. agreement. That it's was what we were just easement agreement with. Um, Got it. Okay. Nope. Understood. Okay. Any other comments on the site? Is that other now? site going to be cleaned up? Uh, yeah, when they, we're going to uh, demo the building, raise the building, and you have to leave it in a kind of uh, acceptable condition to the uh, building spec, the fire department, et cetera. So. Okay. Yeah, there won't be any rubble on it, whatever. Probably so, Bob, it. how 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 is that empty lot going to be left? Are you going to fence it? What are you going to do? Well, it probably has to be fenced, fenced in the front, perhaps, uh, or we thought of putting um, the uh, the barriers you see, the concrete barriers you see in a highway, just putting those down for now. How long? I mean, I know you can't judge how long it's going to be till you do something with it. I guess one of my biggest concerns with an empty lot is whether it's fenced, whether it's barriered, whatever it is, it, it just is really detrimental to the neighborhood to be, right? I know the building's big and ugly, but an empty lot, I'm not sure without grass or anything else, I would suggest you might wanna think about at least loaming and roughly seeding or doing something that could be maintained so that it doesn't become an eyesore to the town. Well. Maybe if you allow me to put parking spaces in there temporarily until we find somebody, because you know, from my perspective, it doesn't make sense to keep it vacant. It's not a good return on investment. So, you know, I'm all for, and in fact, I can't disclose who we're negotiating with, but we're negotiating with several parties. One good. of them is a, a nonprofit 
And uh, we just have to wait for ter- certain things to fall in line. And if they do, we move forward. If they don't, we don't. In the meantime, uh, if you have suggestions or there are regulations in the town, I'm happy to abide by them. I know when you, well, there's a rule about when the buildings are vacant for wild fire, uh, uh, Brian, you have to do certain things for the building to maintain it while it's vacant. Uh, I, well, I mean, that, that, bylaw for that there may be a bylaw for just a vacant site, too. Yeah, I mean, Bob, the whole building is going to be raised, correct? Correct. Yeah, so we're going to have a vacant lot. Um, you know, I just don't want it to look like a vacant lot. No, no, I understand. Sure. I know Bob wants to get it rented and moved, and I get that, but it's a weird time. Who knows whether it's going to be months or years? The point's well taken, Mr. Tabell. I, I understand but the Bob, concern. You don't want a blighted lot in the middle of downtown. No, nor does Santander want a blighted lot next to them. Understood. Yeah, well, Bob and I will talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Anyone, Anyone else? Change would like yep. to, um, a Dave? Mural. What, Bob? I said perhaps a culture of change would consider putting a mural on a, uh, <laughs> on a flagpole. Well, <laughs> you know. Mural? Yeah. yeah. All right. Art mural. All right, if there's nothing else on the site, why don't we move on to architectural? Well, I, I had one quick question. Maybe it's not a site thing, but okay. I, I want, didn't we condition a crosswalk in that area with 5 Bennett Street? It's there, isn't it? Well, the, the, cross, uh, the, the um, piece that came in from the Department of Public Works, was it today, Brian? Yes. The department. Um, they want us to put all new crosswalks in there, which we're probably going to have to do because... The, the town crosswalk is actually on my land and they realized that finally and they want to get that resolved. So I'm not sure we'll have to get Paul Pinocchio and the engineering department to figure out how they're going to do that. But there will be uh, ADA accessibility, you know, at the curb cuts and so forth and so forth. Brian, you also have to look at the five Bennett Street project because we had that's right. And, and money set aside for islands yeah. and also, which I think is what Tom's referring that, to. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. And the town administrator has taken that over because if you remember, because of the Envision project, he did not want that done right away. Correct. But we, no. it, there's still money for that. And we need to make sure that this and that is coordinated. Correct. So DPW might not even know that. So they mentioned that also. They want it coordinated with the... Um, the envision and also with the um, bike trail. Yep, there's a lot of points in their letter. They did note a few of these things, so they did. All right, anything else? Thank you. Architecturals or elevations? Yep. Yep. All right, this is going to be just be able to make it open these. Why are you doing that, Brian? I'd have to wake me up shortly, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> doing my best. Just, Brian, just curious, kind of tangential. I mean, there's a Santander area right downtown. Does this, is just an additional site or is there anything that you can speak I'll, of? I'll, I'll let Bob address that. Oh, okay. Just... I don't have all the details on that either, but I do know that the, the, uh, the Santander building is functionally obsolete. They only use the ground floor because the roof leaks and water comes through from the fourth floor down to the third floor and they don't use the second floor. So it's a legacy from uh, the, Wake, the old Wakefield Trust Company that they have a four-story building that's uh, basically inadequate for what they need. So whether they, they have uh, a lot of lease, commercial leases, they have stay over rights when they do something else, whether they've done that or executed a short-term extension or whether they'll keep them both open for a while. I don't think they'll do that, but I'm not really privy to the information. It's bank information. Yep. Well, I know it's, they're ready Bob, to I, can, I can confirm that, that that would be the case. They'd be moving that location to this new location. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Okay. I did know 
right. Just curious, something that might have been in the works having two branches so close to each other. But yep. Yeah. Thanks. I'm gonna try to do it. Starting to see them along with your lovely mailbox. Can you um can you can you can you see that? We can see your mailbox. Oh, all right. Hold on. <laughs> Don't look too close. Can you see these yet? No. Not yet. Oh, yep. They started to render and then they went away. Oh, all right. All right. Let me try to do this. Way. Tom, do you want to kind of take over here and what we're doing? Sure. Um, Tom, do do you you... Tom, do you have an ability to share your screen? It might be easier. Uh, I think so. All right. Let me stop sharing. It's going to be easier for you to do it because that way you, you can bring up what you want. So, uh, Tom, would you pronounce your last name so I don't absolutely destroy it? Chudina. Thank you. Uh, Tom is our architect, and um, we've been working with on this, and so I'm going to let him take over the screen and mm -hmm. probably be more a lot more timely and efficient. And Tom, Tom you should you should be able to grab the screen chair, Tom. Everyone in the meeting room should. So, Tom. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. Could you just give him a thirty second background? on uh, the company and your um, experience with uh, Santander and banks and so forth. Sure. Um, the company is DRL Architects. We, um, for the last, oh, nearly 40 years, um, I've been with the firm for 30 and we specialize in financial institutions. Um, so this is pretty much all we do. Um, and Santander has been a great customer and client of ours for probably the last five years. Um, we've been doing a lot of work for them. And I'm pleased to say this is a new prototype building um, that has been developed, um, not, not entirely by us. It's actually a, uh, the prototype is developed by a national architectural firm they use. And then uh, the local architects, in this case, DRL, take it and get it to work with the, um, the, the specific site and, and, and program that's needed for, for that location. So, um, so I'll just start with the, the, uh, the, the pretty pictures um, so you can get a sense of what the building looks like. We have one from, from each direction. Uh, can everybody see that okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, this is taken from the other direction, looking down, and we, we didn't get into modeling the existing uh, buildings that, that, that were down there, but you can see the, the, the landscape and the future bike uh, trail uh, in the back. Um, I'll jump to the plan just to give you some, um, a better orientation of how, how it, it's laid out. Um, as, as Bob mentioned, it's a one-story, 2,500 square, uh, square foot building. Um, slab on grade. Its entrance faces Main Street. Um, it does have a side entrance into the same vestibule area off the, you know, that's that's facing the parking, and that would become the primary um, ATM entrance for after hours. You can see there's a there's a gate here that that um, rolls down and and just creates a separate or a, an enclosed ATM vestibule for after hours. Um, and then the perimeter is is designed about there's a little more than two thirds of the space, um, maybe even three quarters of the space is designated to the banking operations. You can see there's a series of offices, um, banking transaction area, and a uh, safety deposit area, um, ATM room, and back of house areas are at the back of the building, <clears throat> along with a emergency egress that goes out towards the uh, Richardson Street side. Um, the, the elevations, uh, the, the materials, I should say, the combination of, um, a brick, you know, uh, a brick veneer along with, um, a metal Lucabon type panel, um, metal panel, that system that they use, all of the glazing oh. is aluminum storefront. Um, the Lucabon actually is, as you saw in the rendering, there's two two colors, there's the, the gray color that wraps around the, the roof edge, and then there's some accents in their, their marketing, you know, their, their standard corporate color. Um, that's the 
that's the gist of it, I should say. Um, I'll get into a little bit more specific. If you look at the side elevation here between the rear, which is this column line one and column line two, there's a lower roof here that it drops down and that's where we, we place the mechanical equipment so that it's not seen. Uh, the back of the building actually has a, a, um, a mechanical type screen that, that allows for venting and prevents a bathtub type effect on the roof. Um, so um, it's a very forward thinking building that um, the bank feels reflects uh, the, the, the service they wanna provide for the community and their customers. And um, uh, I think that pretty much sums it up. I'd be happy to take any questions or if you want me to get into any more specifics as far as the, the building system. Okay, thank you, Tom. Any comments or questions, board members, on the architectural aspects? So this is a like a same prototype that you use in other places. It is. This Just, is um, it's kind of uh, cut and paste. Um, yeah, it hasn't actually been. This is is a brand new. So um, we've only this would be the first one, I should say. We, we've been approved in another town just last week. Um, so yeah, we're we're happy to say they're finally finally going to be rolling these out. So the style, the colors, the brand is part of this new template or model. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Tom, did you do the one in Gloucester? We did. That was not the prototype. That was a, a an, you know an existing building that was infilled. Yeah. Okay. Similar, similar type of gate coming down and things like that, though. So I've seen some similarities. Yeah, very similar program on the, on the interior. Yeah. So there's no wiggle room, obviously, understanding that, you know, the red is their corporate color, but even just the brick and stuff like that, they're not looking like nothing it, is that. There's not. wiggle room. Uh, there's, oh, well, yeah, there's wiggle room approval or not. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But uh, is the... There's nothing that that color, that style, in that. I mean, directly across the street is another brick building that's not even close to that. Yeah, I think what they found with this the color studies is, you know, the the red, which yes, that's their corporate color. They they obviously they're not going to go away from that. Um, but they found that the gray works best with that. Um, and and I. I certainly could improve on this rendering there. There's actually some red that's actually inside also um, that's not seen that also kind of um, contrasts with the gray. So it, it, you know, there's a little, it's a little more balanced, but you're just not seeing it in the rendering. Um, I think the studies that, that they, they did on the color selections was that the, the more traditional red bricks clashed with their, their corporate color. I think that's why they um, prefer to avoid them. And the same time there, sign on the left side there is white. Yes, yes. On the, the building. Yep. The letters would be uh, freestanding letters. In fact, it's on both sides. It's the same side, uh, same size. Um, I actually have the sizes if you want to see those. Um, and it's all all um, halo lit lettering. So there's there's the, the the three that you see in the renderings, and then the flame, the logo at the top. All right, so I think I think it would be in, important going forward. I mean, that's kind of the first building you see coming into town, and I think it would be very important to show a rendering of what comes after it, because it doesn't look like any thought was given whatsoever as to how it fits into the town. That's where I was going with the color. Oh, yeah, to, the left, to the left of the building there, there's 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 um, stores, commercial space just something that makes it look like it, they thought about it being in Wakefield Center. Yeah, this is they this didn't. is what you have. This is, you can see this, correct? Yep. So this is the building that would be raised and then these are the buildings that are after. Um, and um, We can't see it, Tom. Um, can't see any of it. We, we oh, all, you we're can't. Seeing, we're, we're still seeing the, um, your elevation of the new bank. Um, all right. Sorry about that. Stop I thought... Yeah, there you go. You may have only shared that one file instead of your screen or something. Yeah, yeah I think I did. There we go. Brian, do you have the landscaping 
scheme? I do. I'll let Tom finish. I was going to bring that okay. up. So this is, can you see it now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not, um, I don't want to be too critical of, of what's, what's there, but I, I know, I know what, what, whoops, what happened there. I know what Bob's intention is as far as designing something that's, that's new and, um, you know, also forward thinking with this, with this other development. Um, but it's hard to kind of project what that building might be or what any other, you know, revital, revitalization might, might be. Um, but I, I think it, it certainly, um, is, is similar in character and, and, you know, design as the, uh, the new complex across uh, Richardson Street. And I'm thinking even too, like the McDonald's, we just had that updated over there. It kind of goes well, I think with that. I like the colors of it. Well, the, the uh, Bennett Street building has a, some gray in it to, to correspond with the gray that's in the in your junior high school too. So, you know, the color palette is within the range of the of the current neighborhood at the same time. And Greg, to your to your point earlier, um, with their corporate colors, they came back, I'm gonna say two years ago, it might have been three years ago, uh, with a whole signage package for the center of town. Mm -hmm. uh, of which we approved none. And then they came back with their secondary color palette, which they would also be happy with, which we approved. So nothing set in stone. No, understood. Yeah. If we, if we hate the red, we hate the red. But if you like, I, it doesn't kind of in this situation, it doesn't bother me because it bothered me on a historical building. On this building, it doesn't bother me quite as much. I think I'm just thinking of it as kind of as Mike said, it is the entrance to town and the mix of just gray to make the red stand out is an extremely corporate, um, you know, so I think yeah. it's cut and paste and it does nothing for, you know, a welcoming to town, hey, here's a change. Or I should say welcoming to downtown, hey, here's a change especially if we have a McDonald's right next to it. So I think, oh, Amy, that almost makes it worse for me. We already have a chain right there. I mean, not right next to it, but pretty close. Well, we can't keep small businesses open because people refuse to shop at them. So we're going to have bigger corporate things like this. So it, I, I don't mind having them here, but it still can look better than it's just there. Hey, this but is this is, but this is the, the thing is that this end of town is dead. Sweet Bay has finally moved down there basically, and they've doubled their business. With, with this showing up, basically it's gonna draw more people down to this end of town, put some pressure on the town to really do something down this end. I can guarantee you Sweet Bay is gonna love having this next door to it because there'll be people basically that will watch over to Sweet Bay. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, this is the end of town that has needed a lot of help Ever since not, this moved in. Just, I think we can even cut it short. I'm not against Santander coming here. I'm not saying that. But just because it's Santander, I don't think we need to say your building's great and move on. Oh, no. I, you know, it, like Chip already mentioned, basically, the fight for downtown, for the building downtown, I was in the middle of. This one here, I, I, I don't mind it. It gives a little, it gives a little oomph to downtown. Mm -hmm. It freshens it up. And we'll see what comes next door. And, and to be honest, the ones next to that could use some work, but. <laughs> well, I've you talked know. to the tree of butters going up the street, actually four butters. Yeah. And uh, we can't do anything, but, you know, we yep. have in mind to try and improve um, piece by piece. That's a, yep. And this is a start. And it's a corner, corner lot. Yeah, very visible presence. Years just to get this going in that area. Yeah, and it's not multi-mixed, uh, you know, development with residential and not mixed development. It's just pure commercial mercantile. Yep. Big a checkbook, Bob. <laughs> okay. Any other comments, questions on the architecture for now? We can move on. 
This is a okay. landscape plan that uh, Tom okay. just put up that we've hired uh, Jim Emanuel, who you're familiar with, and mm -hmm. Jimmy has put this together. Everything will be irrigated. Did you say he's here tonight or not? No, I, I don't. You know, I think this is there's not a lot of room for landscaping here, but it's certainly going to be an improvement. And I said to Jim, I don't think you need to come tonight. And, and okay. if the board has comment on it, we can bring it to the next meeting. But um, I don't think I need to keep him here till ten thirty. No, understood. Just didn't know if he was lurking. Mister Tabell has issues with it. We will hear, and he'll tell Mister Emanuel exactly what to do. Bigger caliper, more. <laughs> No, I mean, Jim, yeah, Chip um, or others, if you look at the planning schedule and any comments, we can uh, raise them up and have a deeper discussion. Which we will. Yeah. But it looks good opportunity along the borders. Just think about snow, obviously. Yeah. Um, maybe it's part of that easement because you're going to be pushing snow somewhere, not on the rail trail. <clears throat> this will be a ground lease. Yes, no. that's correct. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Go ahead, Bob. No, it's not a ground lease. I'm building the building and leasing it to them. Okay. Bob, will, Bob will maintain ownership of the building. It's, just, it's really a building lease, Mike. Okay. okay. That seems reasonable, putting, putting some landscape where the islands, the strip along Richardson, out front. And do, did the visual represent it when you were showing the front elevation, side elevation? Because we'd want to assure that those renderings are, those should show the actual landscape. So we would look for them to be- They don't, we, we, we had the rendering done. I mean, the, the locations and, and where we're showing them do, but the renderings are not representative of what the landscaping is because we had it done before the landscape plan, but- Brian, I see, a, I see a mistake on the site plans. Okay, so just to close on this though, Tom, you you understand, we just look for that consistency. I don't know if you've been before us before, but in the end we will want, and there might be updates to the landscape plan. We'll just want the, the plans to be in sync. So what we see visually here does sure. represent what's on the landscape. So they all sort of tie in, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Chip. Yeah, I have a problem with the site plans. There's a typo. Is all of the curb seems to be bituminous, something bit, bit something. It, yeah, bituminous. Bituminous. Yeah, that should be, I think, three different initials. Granite vertical. It's usually GVC. We don't let any buildings go in town without granite curbing. Just FYI. Well, where, where is? Oh, hold on. It's just all the curb. It's not bit 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 firm. Yeah, no, it's vertical granite curbing. BGC. BGC. Just so you know. The standard we have in town for any new construction. That's all. Just we'll deal deeper in it when we talk about site and all your other stuff, but just so you know going forward. Good catch, Chip. Okay. Thanks. That's the first thing I look for. Besides, I, don't, I didn't even notice on the irrigation plan, but it, I'm sure there's a note somewhere that said it'll all be irrigated. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's on there. Yeah, they just missed the curbing, that's all. No, fine, but that's the other one. It's like we, we hone in on that they have to be there. Yeah, okay. Anything else? Brian, were there other slides, show, plans? Um, no, I don't have any anything else. I think Tom did a good job. I think we've given a good... Well, yeah, Bob, Bob um, and I told you we're, we're waiting to hear from TAC, um, and um, we've heard your comments. Bob, do you have anything to add? Well, I think we covered what we know so far. I do too. Yeah. So, Brian, just just on the on the parking, what do you know what the the requirement is? It's yes. ten, and we have eleven, I believe. Okay, yeah. based on the, the use and the like square footage, and yes, yeah. and use. Yeah, one one space uh, for two every two hundred fifty square feet. So ten required, providing eleven. Eleven we have Bob or ten parking. Can you talk? Can you go back to the site plan for a minute? I think it was eleven. One it's eight. eleven. You have no, eleven. I think it's eleven. 
Yep, 11. I thought, okay, so I didn't want to misrepresent it. And that's front one's a handicap. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, any other comments, questions, board members for this initial presentation? Okay. Um, yeah, so we got the DPW letter. We'll, we'll wanna hear uh, your comments because some might be updates to plans, some might be ultimately conditions perhaps. Um, CONCOM, not within their jurisdiction, will not require a permit. However, the commission recommends that the applicant adhere to good housekeeping practices during the execution of the project. So you've got that right, Brian? You, I think you got copies. Get those. I'll get them from Gail uh, this week. I don't see. As far as as far as um, if I can just add, Mr. Chair, as far, the only other thing I did want to mention and, and is that you know as far as zoning goes, is there's basically 100% compliance in the business district. No lot area is required. This has 11,245 square feet. Frontage requirement is 40 feet. We have 111. FAR is 1.5. This is 0.21. There's no there's no setbacks in the business district. You know we are set back. As a matter of fact. Um, pretty significantly in, in some of them. Number of stories, uh, we only have one story and the height in the business district is 60 feet. This is only 17 feet. Lot coverage is only 21.5% out of 80% allowed. Yep, sounds good. I just saw that in the file. And we haven't seen any other correspondence from other boards at this time, usually the fire department or and engineering, obviously you've heard from the DBW, so. Um, okay. Unless there's anything else board members at this time, we can open up the public testimony. If anyone from the public has a comment or question, you can raise your hand in the Zoom meeting and I'll call on you in order. seeing hands go up. So I'll close it to public testimony for the evening. Again, we'll be continuing and getting into various so, aspects of the word in more detail. So there'll be other opportunities. So yes, Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman, I, I, I know usually we go on and on, but this is pretty simple, right? It's 1700 square feet. It's not a big building. It's a pretty basic lot and it's corporate. What, what are, I mean, we have to get the other things answered. We have to talk about architecture. We have to talk about landscaping, but I don't see breaking this out into 10 more meetings, right? I think we can do a lot of it all in the same meeting. Like if they answer the, I mean, what, what other question? We're not really redesigning. We may talk about signage a little bit. We may talk about colors a little bit, but you know, we're really not, there's not a whole lot here to discuss once questions are answered. So how do you want to move forward to, you know, I'd like to just do, you know, answer the engineering questions, landscaping, traffic, kind of all in the next, and a little bit of architecture, but people didn't really jump up with a whole lot of objections tonight. I mean, in my opinion, we don't need to drag this out a whole long time. Oh, we will only do what we need to do, but but that's why I'm saying, what do we want to do for the next meeting? You know, usually we do cover one subject a night. There's just not that much to cover here. Why don't we just come back with everything? But so maybe, I think it's all traffic and traffic flow. I think that's a big one. They got to get the TAC. I want to hear what they say about driveway location. So do we not want to meet again until they've done that? That's where I'm going. Where, you know, what's, 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 what are people's concerns? So Brian, do you think you can get the DPW? I mean, we could have a meeting in two weeks if you had all the response. Because the DPW had a four-page letter with 22 comments. They got to respond to some of those. So we might want to oh, talk yeah. about that. Yeah. And, and any architectural updates, any de uh, landscape update, you know, details. So we could cover oh, a few yeah. things in one meeting. It's just whether we're ready to do yeah, traffic. I think, I, well, it depends on when that we're going to be able to get before the TAC. And, and I would bet that we will be before them uh, before your next meeting. Um, uh, Lieutenant Anderson is very responsive always, and um, he said he was going to get us on as soon as he could. 
Um, so, and that was a, that was two weeks ago. So I, I would expect we're going to hear from him any day. I will note also just to, to mitigate uh, any issues. Basically, this is not in the Overlay District. Really? That's Amazing. right. It's not in the Overlay District. It's going to be handled similar to the the storage building on Water Street. And I suspect since it's got signage. So does, this, does this go under the old sign bylaw? Yes. yes. So I suspect the signage on Main Street, the signage on, on the side street, and the signage toward parking probably are all legal as long as they meet the size requirements. But then we have all parking lot directional stuff to look at and anything else they might want to add. Yeah, but it's but it's not hamstrung by the overlay district. Okay. So Brian, is there a sign package or a sign plan that you can just show us? We will see. Right yeah, I mean Tom went through it briefly, but we do have a we do have a sign package. Um, we okay. do have a sign plan. Um, so why don't we why don't we go now, through that too? Tom, okay. Quickly, Tom? Not tonight. No? no. Okay. You, you get no. tired, Mr. Turbo? Yeah. Um, I get up in the morning. Can you call me at me, Brian? I'm Just sorry? give me the name of the sign consultant company. We have a sign consultant company, we have a lighting consultant company, and I read that thing we got from DBW. There's nothing on there that uh, would take even two weeks for us to uh, work out with the DBW and get done. The only thing, we do everything by right with the exception of the drive-through, and we have a traffic advisory report that Brian may be able to resolve that in the next week. We'll get back in two weeks and perhaps get some answers. So uh, like your um, member suggested, we can get something moving in a, in a mercantile direction. We'd like, to, we'd like to be back in two weeks and, and we'll see what we can cover. And it sounds like we can potentially cover a lot in a, yeah. just, you know, maybe not a long period of time. And we'll see if at that point, if we think we're, in a good spot or we just need to continue because there's something else that comes up at that time but well I'd, I'd ask i'd ask if they do have a sign package which it looks like they do is send it ahead so that i can look at it basically and tell you whether how compliant or not compliant it is with the old code that'd be great thank you okay and i would suggest that they should also look at it and see how compliant they are or not as well we shouldn't do all their work well, you got to understand, Mr. Tabell, uh, Mr. McBain and I usually don't agree on that. So, and, and he, <laughs> as you know, uh, and he usually wins. So I'd rather have him tell me where we're not compliant. <laughs> and also want to maybe start looking at an O&M plan, too. Okay. Got it. Okay, so the punch list just gets longer, but yes, potentially we could get a lot covered in the next meeting if, if all this stuff gets gets uh, worked offline. All right. Great. Anything else? Thanks for your time. We will move quickly. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Chip. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I move that we continue this hearing to our January twenty seventh meeting. Second. Did, did we open to public? Yeah, we did, and it already closed. All right, there were no hands raised. Yeah. Um, any discussion? Chip? Nope. Amy? Yes. Move. Thank you. Whatever. Amy? What? <laughs> How do you want to vote on the motion? How do you, you want, want to vote on moving on? I already you, did that. Sorry, yes. The thing you seconded a few minutes ago? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was my vote. <laughs> I know, it's Leave getting late. <laughs> Hang in there. Hang in there. Greg? Yes. Joe? Yes. Jim? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tom? Yes. Okay, thanks everyone. All right, we're continuing for the evening. Thanks for the presentation tonight. We'll see you in two weeks. All right, moving right along.
Next new hearing 21-32 and 33, James F. Hutton and Joan H. Hutton at 111 Greenwood Avenue. Welcome back, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Hutton deserve a gold badge tonight. He's been on since the beginning. Yeah. And we appreciate your patience. We just take them in order. <laughs> Crowd is, the crowd shrinks as the night goes on, right? Yeah. Um, for the record, Attorney Brian McGrail representing uh, James F. Hutton and Joan H. Hutton uh, regarding their property uh, situated at 111 Greenwood Avenue in Wakefield. Uh, Jim is with us tonight, as you just recognized. Also, Peter Sandors is uh, the architect. Uh, and Ryan Hutton is here also. Ryan is involved with, with Jim um, on the property. Um, so, I'm gonna move right along. Um, property is at 111 Greenwood. Um, this is, oh, I got the wrong one, hold on. You had it there, Brian, first. No, uh, this is, um, this shows a proposed no? condition. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, I wanna find, um, just bear with me folks. For some reason I attached the wrong one. Well, does, the board, does the board have the plan that I submitted? I do. Because I can probably just cut to the chase on this instead of searching this. Um, Let me see if I can is, find it. Basically, this is, this is a site plan. And um, what, what uh, the Huttons are proposing is to put an addition, the property's at 111 Greenwood Avenue. Uh, it's a relatively small lot. It has 30 feet of frontage. It only has 2,700 square feet. Um, and um, it has a, you know, a, a reasonable house built on it. Um, what they're, what they're uh, looking to do is in this area where the proposed addition uh, is, they currently have a deck. Um, it's almost exactly the same size. Um, and they're looking to take down the deck and they're looking to put um, what I would call a modest addition on the back um, to increase the living area in the rel relatively small home. Um, if, if you look at the zoning table, um, it, it, as far as there's two things that they're requesting, they're requesting a finding, uh, which is typical because we have a non-conforming um, house in a non-conforming lot that we're adding on to. Um, so we, we're asking for a finding. Um, and we're also asking for a variance. And you know, it's pretty interesting that the, the significance um, of the variance, because when you look at the zoning table, um, lot area isn't changing. Frontage isn't changing. Uh, front setback remains the same. Side setback on the left remains the same. On the right remains the same. The rear, we're going a little bit closer, but we're well within compliance of the 25 feet at 35.8. Number of stories is uh, remaining at 2.5. Height, no relief needed. The lot coverage, because it's a small lot, is a request for the variance. So. Uh, the allowed in the single residence district is 30%. It's currently at 29%. We're, we're going to go over a little bit at 34.4 needing. So we need a variance for the lot coverage in addition to the finding. Minimum open space um, is, is complied with. Um, that's not uh, changing. Um, so, so basically, um, that is the, the relief that we're seeking for variance. Um, I can get into the standards on that, but um, I think the board might want to see what we're proposing for an addition. So I'm going to let Peter, if you could. Um, so, hold on, Brian. Sorry. Before you leave the table, so just a couple of anomalies. I'm just not sure if I'm getting it right. So the frontage row says required 100, existing 100. The existing is 30, right? 30. Oh. Yeah, that's a Paul Finocchioism. Okay. Yeah. You wish it became 100. Yeah. Okay, so that, that really should say 30 because you're not changing it. Um, and the and the left side, the right side setback, the back of the new proposed addition is 5.7. So doesn't that become the right side setback, not 6.2? See the top of the proposed addition? Let me. Let well, it me. looks like those numbers are flopped too. One yeah. yeah, they're flopped backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I'll get Paul to correct the table. Okay. I mean, it's, you know, I don't know that it's going to change our position on this no, just... no it needs to be correct I, I i thank you for bringing that up i didn't see that paul made that error so a couple, couple things that i noticed that's all okay yeah oh they're, they're big notices and when peter's presenting um peter do you um can you bring yours up on the screen peter or do you need me to do it if you do it that'd be great i can do that yeah yeah okay 
hold on. All right. And the lot coverage increases because the porch doesn't count. But the no, the porch is getting count. taken off and the addition's going oh, in. The right. It was no, a, no. it was the deck, oh, guys. The deck yeah. doesn't count. Yeah. 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 That's right. Exactly. Okay, Pete. What do you want me? Um, you can stay there. Okay. These these are the um, uh, proposed changes. You can see the. Uh, just make sure I'm looking at the right. Yeah, I mean, really, the basic, the main reason for this um, addition is to get that master bedroom in the back to be functional up on the second floor, um, and you can see it there with the bed. Uh, if you go down one level below it, we're, we're putting a playroom behind the uh, dining area and the existing bath, showing a small landing and a set of stairs down. And um, then the first um, to the left, the first plan is the um, foundation plan. But really what Brian said is true. We're taking what was the existing deck and saying, remove that, come back in in pretty much the same footprint um, create a new uh, real foundation and on top of that place a playroom and on top of that um, extend uh, what is a very small bedroom and make it a functioning um, master bedroom. And that's the intent. Brian, do you have the, will you be able don't, to- Don't leave this screen quite yet. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm looking at the dates on this and I don't want Paul Finocchio to be the only one thrown under the bus tonight. <laughs> do you want to tell me how we got to 2030 so quickly well you know these things happen <laughs> in the pandemic i mean i know um, we want to get rid of 2020 i get yeah, that but exactly the the 30 is a little bit of a stretch peter yeah i agree <laughs> um so i'm actually looking at a plan with a rendering that's dated 12 10 20 so why do we have 11 30 30 Who's the Jim, president? I sent, I sent you that one, did I? Brian, if no. you want, I can pull up the the zoning board packet. I have it open. I think that's what, Peter, I think that's what you're looking at and what we had submitted. I, I am. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Right, let me stop sharing here. Hold on. The plans you sent us are so small, I can't see it. No, the, the plans you sent us are the same ones you were sharing. That's right. So what happened on this, I think Pete, I, I think Peter, actually your your plans are dated after I filed because we I was in a we were in a real rush to get this file for the Hutton's because they wanted to get going on their construction. Oh here, this is 12 10 20. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we're back in, in real more real time. Yeah. You know, I think I think Mr. Chair, these plans you're seeing tonight, Peter, can you get Gail a hard copy set of these tomorrow? Yes, because these these are going to be your official plans for architecture. Okay, say. so I'm I'm using a date of twelve ten. Correct. 20. Correct. Correct. There's a rendering of the um we, because the addition is in the back. There's a rendering of the rear elevation, showing the slider to the um to the small back landing down to the uh, to the grade, um the windows in the playroom, and then the windows up in the uh, bedroom above. Steve, you can scroll to the next um, slide. And, and this is the um, the site plan. We, we just made it a little more graphic. And this is talking about what Brian talked about, the square footage and the need um, for the fact that we're going over the allowable lot coverage. Um, does our number, Steve, can you read it? Does our number agree? Or is it still what we talked about? I see the 6.2 there. See what I'm talking about, Steve? Where where the addition pinches. I think what Paul's showing is the distance from the lot line to the addition. Rather Keep going, than, Pete. I'm gonna pull up Paul's existing conditions plan when you're, you, when you're done, I'll have it. Okay. Yeah, no um, so this is proposed site plan. Um, we're showing the addition pinched. So we actually make it better. We're pulling the addition in a little bit. The 5.7. Uh, house. Yep. Um, go ahead, Steve. You can go to the next slide. 
Yeah, one's yeah, the one with the table is not the next and one. and and I think these just these are just easier to read because we're showing existing house in uh, in shaded area and then the addition uh, and the renovation in uh, in white, uh, but it's what or new foundation, the new playroom, and the expanded master bedroom. And um, Steve, you can go to the next one. And here is the, it's a bungalow style house. The front doesn't change. The left and right elevation show the uh, addition and um, renovation. Steve, I see two fronts. I don't see a rear, I don't think, but that's okay. <laughs> it's, you can see the renovation, uh, the addition in uh, the right and left um, elevations, how it projects to the back. And then this, um, Plan shows us the existing conditions with the existing deck, set of stairs down, the existing second floor, uh, the small bedroom on the right, and the existing foundation. Well, although this to me is a pretty simple thing, it seems like we got a lot of housekeeping to take care of to get. Yeah, the we'll clean up. Both from you and Paul. Yeah. Yeah. So let me. Uh, um, um, hang on. But I don't think we should penalize the Huttons for that. Correct. We can. I have a. This this will help a little bit. Um, Pete, can you stop sharing from it? Thanks. Yep. This is this is the existing condition plan on the deck. So it, it's currently, the house is currently 6.2. Right. All right. That's, that's that, okay. And then, um, so now let's go back to the. And the addition is five feet seven. Yeah, but I, I, I it's think. It's indented a little, it looked like. Well, it doesn't make sense. Sense. I don't want to make a mistake on this, so let's. Yeah. And thank well, you. That's what I have in front of me in the packet. No, no. It was the next screen. It's confusing because the addition is the same size as the Paul, deck. Paul made, Paul, Paul, you know, and he's not here, so I can blame him. Um, yeah. But there's a, there's a mistake. You're right. The addition, the addition actually goes closer. So that needs to be part of the part of the finding. Okay. Uh, but when, when Paul did the, did the chart here, he said it wasn't going to go closer. See it? It look like it does go closer. It does go closer, but it, so the, this chart is wrong. He says existing 6.2 feet. Okay. Which is correct. At the house. At the, at the house, not and at the addition becomes 5.7. Yeah, so I mean, um, it's closer. Oh, so Peter, does the addition go up beyond the house? It does not, it's pinched in. But I think what's happening looking at the 6.3 in the front and the 6.2, that line that looks straight must taper in. It's got to, or the house might be jockeyed a little bit. Yeah, some something is up there. Yeah, because this is three point five and that's three point three point four. So I think yeah, and that's six point three. I think the house is jockeyed a little bit. So as it as you go back further with the addition, it gets closer to the line. Yeah. Yeah, just if you if you go look at the other side, it gets further away. Yeah, it's four instead of three point seven. Yeah, which so makes sense. Which makes we sense. don't know what's wrong. Is it no, that makes sense because it's closer here, it gets further here, and the further you go back, the further away it gets on this side. On this side, the further back you go, the closer it gets. Oh, well, I actually think it's a typo because if you look at the left side, it's three and a half feet. The proposed addition and the deck footprint that's there is pinched in six inches on each side. So if you look at the back of the proposed addition on the left, it's four feet from the setback. So I think where it says... 5.7 feet it actually should be 6.7 feet because it's pinched in six inches so if you add half a foot to 6.2 it should be yeah. six so so i think i think um jim are you there jim hutton i sure am yeah so i think what we it's gotta good. do is we gotta get this right 
it's critical for you that this is right. Um, I think what we need to do is continue this just for two weeks so we can get Paul to clean this plan up and get these numbers accurate because we can't have the board give us, or we can't request of the board um, relief that's inaccurate. It's gonna cause a problem for us. I think what you're hearing from the board is, I think we're okay with this plan, you know, with, with what you're proposing to do. I don't think the board has any concerns with the, what you're proposing to do. It seems reasonable. Um, it's just, we got to get the numbers right so that we're granting the proper relief because the variance runs with the land and we just, we got to make sure we're granting the right. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate that. I, I know it's a very unique lot. Um, at the end of the day, my goal is to have my son and his family stay in the Greenwood neighborhood uh, with their growing family. And um, I would very much appreciate your favorable consideration. We'll clean this up and whatever we need to do uh, yeah. from, the, from a surveying standpoint. And on the fee, on the architectural plans and, and and on the plan as well, right? I'll I'll work with Peter's team on that as well. Yeah, and we'll and we'll get in touch with Paul tomorrow as well, so that we all have the numbers that relate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, other, the other thing I want to add is, you know, I know the board always likes to know how the neighbors feel, and um, so um, uh, the Huttons approached all the direct butters to the property, and, and I'll get this to Gail. For the record, they have all signed uh, a statement of support of, of the project and requesting the board to give the relief. Could I also suggest, Mr. Chairman, that we let the Huttons go first in continued hearings in our continued hearing? Because I don't think anybody for this type of thing should have to sit through our meetings another another time. Thank you, uh, Mr. Tarball. It has been an education, I will say. <laughs> Not without some combat pay. Okay, no, that's that's a reasonable accommodation. I think we can uh, do that. We're, we're thrilled to move forward, and we are very happy to stay in Wakefield, both us moving back from Florida for our grandchild and uh, my husband and his wife and new family uh, staying in the Greenfield Greenwood section. We're very thrilled at this prospect. Thank you. Okay. Well, welcome back. Thank you. Um, just for the record, um, correspondence, just DPW um, had no comments at this time. That letter was dated January 6th. And then December 18th, CONCOM sent us a letter stating for the record that this project doesn't fall within their jurisdiction, uh, but just asking that any project is done and here's the good housekeeping practices during the execution. So um, those are the two letters we received from other boards. Other than that, anything else board members for tonight? Okay, once again, we'll open up the public testimony. If there's any member of the public wishes to ask a question, please raise your hand in the Zoom meeting. Not seeing any hands go up, we will close with the public testimony for the evening. No, May I propose that we continue this till January 27th to be Second. the first, to be the first continued hearing on January 27th. Second. Thank you, any discussion? All in favor, Chip? Yes. Amy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Joe? Yes. Jim? All right, you're on mute, thumbs up, thank you. Tom Lucy? Yes. Mike Feely? Yes. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, thanks for your patience tonight. We'll see you in two weeks thank at you. or about 7 p.m. or maybe 7.05. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Have a good night. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, that's all the official hearings for the evening. I know we have a couple other matters to cover, um, including a um, administrative relief request from T-Mobile. So, um, Brian, while you're here, yeah, do you have both of these? Let's see. No, I have uh, 69 Foundry. Oh. Okay. Yeah. 291 Salem? That's not going to go forward. We're not ready. We just, that Gail was kind enough to put that on the agenda just in case they were ready with their with their new drainage uh, report. But it's Okay. Not. So next time, not ready. Maybe. Right. Maybe. Um, maybe. Okay. Yeah. But not tonight. All, All right. right. So, so the next one relates to 17. Wait, wait, Dave, Dave yeah. can I ask a question about this Salem Street? Um, Quickly. It, yeah. Um, there's a survey that was given to us, supposedly an Asville survey, and it's just a bunch of spot grades. It doesn't, it, it's very difficult to read in comparison to the original 
documentation. I suggest basically whoever did the survey connect all the grades basically just like they were on the original set so we can actually see what the heck's going on. And why do it now? We're going to need another one after they fix the drainage. So as far as I'm concerned, what they sent us is useless. Well, it's certainly useless in my mind because I can't, I, I'm not going to well, spend for, for two reasons. Connect the dots. It's, it's not what, it's not the, they've got a, it's not going to be the as built of the finished product project. So don't waste our time with it. Brian. Yeah. What we want, what we want to do is give you a proposed plan um, and, and that it shows the changes and then it will be built according to the proposed plan. And then you would give us a, as built up bill signed off by an engineer that it was done correctly. If you approve the change, who knows if you will. Right, won't. right. But I'm just saying yeah. to get the as built now means nothing. Because we know it's not built according to the approval. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It, yeah. It's like useless information. Well, then a survey for what they propose to do better have some grades and lines on them. Yeah. So we really can understand what the hell they're doing. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not happy with this group. Understood. Now okay. on the street. I hope so. Okay. <laughs> you tried once. I don't think you can try again. All right. 17 39 40 and 41. This goes back a ways. 69 Foundry Street, Melanson Development Group. We're going to discuss some modifications. Yeah. So um, I think I can, um, Jim, I'm. Jim, I'm going to need your help on this. Uh, Jim, just to give the board some background, um, Foundry Street project is getting very close to completion. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it. Jim and I um, met at the site uh, last week. Uh, he's the board liaison for the project. We walked the site with Tim Sullivan, the project um, superintendent, uh, walked around the building. I thought it was a good site visit. Um, I think the building looks great. I think it fits in great. Um, there's, there's a few things that Tim Sullivan, the um, project super, uh, is very diligent and he brought uh, some issues up to Jim that he thought needed to be discussed and clarified. Um, we, we, after our site visit, we met for approximately two hours. We went through all of the modifications uh, that the board has approved uh, throughout this uh, project to make sure that they were all reconciled. And we're gonna put that into a master document to document them all. Um, and I thank Gail Conroy because um, Gail's minutes were meticulous on this. Um, unbelievable that really pro provided us the playbook to follow along. Didn't miss one beat on what happened for the life of this project and made our job that day so much easier. So um, thank you to Gail and um, the, um, I think you know everything is spot on. There's a few changes or maybe additions that we talked about. I, I quite frankly thought Tim would be on tonight. Um, Jim, didn't you think he was going to be on? I think he might have forgot about the meeting, or fell asleep. Or fell asleep. But in any in any event, I think we're we're pretty organized, and 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 maybe we. I hope we can make some headway. Um, so I'm going to try to do that, um, and I'm sure Jim will be able to help. I hope. Um, Okay, so Brian, when are you going to be looking for occupancies? Um, I think early February, Chip. So what are we going to do about landscaping? We're going to be back. There's other stuff that's probably going to need to be bonded. So we're going to be back at the next meeting with a, with a list um, to talk to the board about that. And you guys are going to come up with a number or you're going to give me the list first and I'll come up with a number? Either or. Probably okay. give you a list and have you come up with a number. Okay. Instead of playing a game, I'd rather you just be comfortable. Well, with I mean, e easy either way. I mean, you can either show me the number you come up with and give me the list to document that. Yeah. Why okay. don't you do that and propose? And if I, if That's you, fine. I feel like it's not enough, we'll tell you. Okay. So can you guys see my, can you see my email here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So we've kind of listed the items to keep on track. Um, and Jim, I'm going to ask for your help on this. So the first thing is, um, there's an intermediate shot post on the rail system. Um, and we wanna, it, the, the elevations, which I'll bring up, showed it colored green. 
and we want to change it to black. This is this is what we went back to is the renderings that were produced as part of the materials list, basically. Yeah. There it is, Jim. I got it. And, and what they, for some reason or other, the rendering basically shows the palings in between the railings, basically um, green on the on the balconies when in fact the whole railing system is really black. Fine. So it's oh. you know it's it's stupid stuff, but. Um, just want to make everybody aware of it. it, now, it the, now the posts on either side are green. The railing system that's installed is all black, including the intermediate intermediate posts. These mm -hmm. posts. Yes. And, so on this, it looks like the top rail's even green. Yes, but they're all black. Yeah. Okay. And and you know. To, and to, you can see in the rendering, you can see the next one over basically is black. Yeah. So it's it's just cleaning this up. But the other thing is that the the posts at the bottom under the under the decks basically is black from the ground up and then green from the way up the rest of the way. Yeah, and you know, kudos to the Seaver who's building it because they were on this and noticed it. And Jim and Amy, because Amy's been you know the board liaison on this project too. So you know, really really into the details. So that was that's number one. Um, number two. Let me see here. Okay, Jim, the corner entry columns, we submit clarification that the round columns at the corner entries will be painted white instead of gray. Well, they, 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 it looks like they're like a purple or something like that. Again, it's the rendering or the printing, basically. They all need to be white. And these are the entry columns at the to the building, basically. I don't, I'm not sure you're gonna find it in there. Oh, they might not be in this one, Jim? No. Okay. Unless they're in the first one, in the uh, first picture. Yeah, maybe you can kind of see them. Yeah, these columns, there they are. Yep. See how they kind of look gray in the rendering? Yep. So, you know, again, people wants to make sure they comply. They're saying, well, it, it really was just a color. We want to confirm that the board wants these to be white. And they should be white. Okay. All right. Okay. Two. Does match his gray suit. Hmm. All right. But is it on a plan anywhere else that says white? It just rendered Greg? Or is this the only place where this color would they, be? They, this is this is the problem. There are some place there are there's a lack of information on, in the drawings if you look at some of these things. Okay. So went, went yeah. looking for elsewhere. So you know it's it's no bit like I say, it's not a big deal. It's just making sure that everything's on record. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um Jim, the balcony light fixtures, um, and these are all gonna be on the, um, they're gonna bring up in the ground level there, fixtures. There, there were not balcony light fixtures showed and uh, there are some out there. So um, I don't see any problem with them, but the ones that they're, they've got up installed. These, so we, just they're already them. up, we walked the site and saw them. Are they plastic? They just look cheap. No. They're metal. They die cast aluminum. Okay. It's just the rendering chip. <laughs> no, they look. They don't look plastic. They still look cheap. <laughs> I was being nice. I was saying it was the rendering. Okay. <laughs> and okay. Oh, landscape plan. Um, so. We, right. went through the, we went through the minutes on the courtyard and, you know, there was modifications done in December of 2018. And we didn't vote on that? Well, you did. But one thing we just couldn't, and we know, and Jim knows, we know that, that, um, that this was discussed and the changes in the courtyard. But there's yeah, just no, of the light and everything else. Yeah, I mean, I there's just no reflection yeah. in the meeting minutes on this specific item. So, you know, again, we spent a lot of time going through this last week and we just said, you know what, let's just get, you know, we're going to do a final document. Let's get the board to confirm that they're okay with this because we don't want to, he doesn't built the hardscape or anything. He said, before he does that, he wants to make sure we're all on the same page. It was never followed up with basically the final closing of that, even though we discussed it clearly and it came up, the, this came about 
because if you remember in the right, right hand corner, basically there was a unit there where in fact um, it would have been a sitting place right outside somebody's unit. Um, so, you know, it changed with, it changed when we changed the design of the building with the new ownership. So right. this is just a record of what we actually had done and what we looked at. It needs to go in basically as part of the minor modification previously okay. approved, but not recorded properly. Okay. Right. Well, previously approved, but which is, did we not reference this in the decision, Brian? No, it was just, it was in the minutes that this was done. And then we said we were going to do a cleanup document at the end for all the changes that were made, which now we have all teed up, but, and we wanted to reconcile those with the minutes which we did, this is the only plan that we couldn't, we, it wasn't referenced in the minutes. Hmm. And we, we just, again, just wanted to be sure. We said, let's be thorough and just bring it back to the board tonight to make sure we're not making any mistake. Okay. I mean, we know we're not, but again, just for that we want to have it on the record that it was back here. Can we discuss it for like an hour? No. No. At least. All right. Why are those flowers pink? <laughs> and give the, the last item whoops I almost I almost exited the meeting um, <laughs> try yeah. harder <laughs> sure you guys would have been heartbroken uh, yes, Miss Jones would she's waiting patient, so patiently <laughs> uh, the only other item Jim that uh, I don't have anything on that you might want to talk about just to remind you yeah at the, yeah, the, at the back of, at the back of the building where the emergency generator is yeah. there is a forest of gas meters Think of Bennett Street, and that's what you got back there in a forest. So there needs to be some uh, landscape screening back there or something to go on out there. And how did that get by our collective noses? They, uh, they, they did it without it being on a plan. Yeah. They talked well, about where they were going. and Just like Bennett Street, it got by us there, too. No, we just, you're right. But I thought we did this one afterwards, and I'm surprised it got by us again. But we didn't yeah, say, where are they going to be and how are we going to screen them? Yeah. Oh, well. Jim, should it be landscaping or a fence? Landscaping. Can we leave that up to Chip that when we're, we'll, put, we'll put something together for him to review because he's going to be doing looking at the landscape holdback anyways? I would say yes. Since he's given me so much work, yes, give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's about it. But, but do we need to see? Do we need to see a plan that shows the landscape? It'll be on a landscape plan. Yeah, it has to go on the landscape plan. Okay. So, I mean, it can be it can be a cloud. Yeah. Just yeah. it doesn't have to. They don't have to redo the whole new. We can give landscape. you a colored pencil chip. Okay. So is that the only one that? I mean, because we can vote. We've got cut sheets of lights, the railing. I mean, I just, uh, can we, are we in a position to make a, a consideration that these various things are minor mods, but normally we don't vote for on a minor mod for a plan we don't actually have yet. Uh, I would not do the landscape. I would do everything but the landscape. Okay. We can, we can bring that back when we do the uh, bonding for the landscaping. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As a, as a minor mod at that point. So one, one through five tonight and do the landscape later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, I move that the discussion we just had on items one through five of Brian's email that he shared with us from every from his email um, are definitely minor modification and just clean up issues. Uh, and it's appreciated that they went through and actually are at that detail level. Okay. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, all right. I, I don't have offhand who voted on this, but we'll go with the regular voting members tonight. Uh, Chip? Yes. Amy? Yes. Jim? Yes. Joe? Yes. And I'll vote yes. Okay. So those are those are done, Brian, and we'll see you in two weeks on the, the landscape. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to beat up Paul Finocchio tomorrow. Indeed, as you should. <laughs> Thank you. Have a, have a nice night. Thank Bye, you, Brian. Brian. Yeah. Yeah. See you guys. All right. Miss Jones. Present. 
so patient. So our, our, <laughs> our last other matter of the evening, 1077 Main Street, T-Mobile, request for administrative relief to modify an existing wireless communication facility. So welcome and thank you again for your yes. patience. So um, do you have something you can share perhaps? Yes, or? good evening. Perfect. Uh, I do, just a moment. Let's see if that will... Are you all seeing my screen? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so just to introduce myself, I'm, when I'm with Transcend Wireless. I'm a representative for T-Mobile for this particular upgrade project to existing antennas uh, at this uh, location at 1077 Main Street. And we are doing a simple modification to the existing antennas. There's currently nine antennas. This is the um, view from a bird's eye view of the roof plan. As you can see that there are currently installed antennas here and then also in this location. Um, just to go over the antenna plan, this is what's uh, currently installed at that location at the different sectors. And then this will be what the final installation. Um, as you'll see, we are just uh, replacing the current antennas with new antennas to maintain the nine existing um, antennas in the final plan. And these are for future spots, but we will not be installing antennas at those locations. Um, any new cabling that we're installing um, will follow the current cable trays that you see here. Uh, the only other adjustments that we are making here is the, um, the uh, equipment plan. Uh, you see the existing equipment plan. We ha currently have a, uh, a cabinet that's located here. And then we have a platform over here with two existing cabinets. What we'll be doing is removing this cabinet here. And you can see we'll be removing it. And we'll be uh, installing a new non-penetrating uh, platform uh, closer to our existing, which will stay there, and we'll be putting in two smaller cabinets um, onto this platform. Again, um, you know, everything will be in line with what is existing, all of our, um, you know, any new lines. Uh, we're not upgrading our electrical. Um, we're just using what's existing there. And um, I, and here's just a side view. I can give you a side elevation just to give you an idea of what the final configuration is. And these are only um, showing black as, uh, as a way to just indicate that those are the new antennas, but they will be white and fall in line with what is existing. And that structure uh -huh. in the middle is the new equipment cabinet? Um, right there. Next that, part. no, I believe um, it's not called out. Um, I think that previous screen. Uh, oh, you... it, it is, yes. Okay, because you were moving it. So that I was going to ask it for is, three dimensions. But I don't know why it's not called out. This particular plan. Um, the cabinet plans. Here's the uh, platform, the new platform as you can see that they're not. And then let me see if I can find, um, sorry, here we go. Uh, no. Nope. You said it's non-penetrating. What does that mean exactly? Um, so there are pl some platforms that will go into the membrane of the roof. Um, oh. and, and anchor itself to, but this is non-penetrating. Oh, that's what you mean. Okay. Just yeah. as I mean, yeah. on the rubber roof. Yeah. yeah. I just want to understand the context of that or penetrating like from some airflow or signal flow or something from the sides or something. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, and I'm just seeing, I don't. So these antennas are going to maintain the same upper height. So when it's not going to stick up higher. No, it is not going to. Um, right now, the plans that you see here, um, where's the, sorry that I'm going all over the place for you guys, keep you guys awake here. Um, this larger antenna, um, it, it, it's going to be within the same height of what is currently existing out at the site. So everything will be in line with what's out there. Currently there's, um, I have a picture. It's not a very good picture and I only have the one, but um, you can see what is currently out there. There's this uh, sled mount with a white board to help sort of conceal it and give a stealthing effect to it. it but they will align here and painted white. And that's basically what's going on. <laughs> okay. Any questions, board, other questions, board members? We've seen, we continue to see these every, every other meeting, every third, fourth meeting. There's a lot of upgrades going on in 5G or whatever. Is, uh, um, Dave, what I don't see is our letter. Oh. Uh, um, it should be included. I included it in the package. Yeah, no, I have it, but Chip doesn't. Okay. I don't have it in our package. Right, you've just got the application. One second. Yeah. And try to render that. Any other questions, board members, on this? While we stall for time. <laughs> nope. Any member of the public wishes to ask a question or make a comment? Dwindling list of other people besides us. And Mr. Chairman, I can do it. It just, I'm going to have to say administrative relief because I don't remember all the numbers that go with it. Um, one second, I can try to help you. So should I be concerned? Oh no, I can't. I can't even do this to you, Whitney. Oh, <laughs> you know we're the zoning board, not the planning board, right? Yes, I do. So the letter to the planning board is just kind of fun for you to. It's it's addressed to the planning board. Your letter. Your application. Uh, yes. <laughs> Type up the necessary letter for a signature. <laughs> oh, sure. Well, it's the best I could do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pinch zoom. All right, Mr. Chairman, are you ready? Yep. After we go ahead, I move that we grant the administrative based on all the correspondence plans and materials provided by the applicant tonight. I move that we approve the nine antennas being replaced uh, on top of 10. 77 Main Street, as well as the two new cabinets on a platform uh, in accordance uh, with the plans presented to us from Transend Wireless dated December 19th, 2020 for administrative review approval That's your motion. Because they were in compliance oh. 
No, nope, he's working on it. I got to okay. find of of the 47 USC 1445A of the administrative review process for the modification of the equipment. That's my proposal. Okay, second. Any discussion on the motion? I just want to make sure that's the right date. You said something 19th, but with the ones that are up, say, I think 1125. I'm looking at their application. Okay. Uh, As presented in the application of December 19th. I can do the plans dated. No, yeah, no either one. I thought you said plans. Either. Uh, 1123. Is that what I'm reading on the stamp? 1125. 1125. Uh, 20. Okay. All right. So your motion as amended, referencing the, the date of the plan? Yep. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Any discussion on the motion? All right. Regular voting members, Chip? Yes. Amy? Yes. Jim? Yes. Joe? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. So that's unanimous. Um, I've got signed copies, three signed copies of the letter here. Um, and uh, we can, uh, there will be in the file. We'll get them to Gail tomorrow. Uh, Ms. Jones? Um, okay. And you can work with her to get, I know you need one copy, right, for your own records. Um, but they'll be with Gail in the, in the building department tomorrow. Amazing. Thank you. You're very welcome. Appreciate again your patience. Um, yes. Have a great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> bye bye. 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 Okay. Approved. All right. Clerk board comments. Anything board members for tonight? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. We look like the um what's the TV show, the Brady Bunch Brady now. Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, minutes December 16th as expertly written by someone oh I move that we uh, what was it December I can't I wasn't no. there no. I move that we approve the minutes of December 16th second any discussion mm -hmm. Amy yes Greg yes Joe. Yes. Jim. Yes. Tom. Yes. Mike. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you again, Gail. Well done. Um, anything else? No. Motion adjourns always in order. I move that we adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Mm -hmm. Amy. Yes. Greg. Uh, yes. Joe. Yeah. Jim. Yes. Yep. If I leave the meeting, um, that be it. Yep. Uh, Mike. Yes. Gail. Yes. Please, <laughs> please. <laughs> All right. Our meeting's adjourned. Thank you for everyone in your time tonight. Have a good night. Bye, Bye guys. Thanks, guys. Bye -bye. See you later.